regular select board meeting called to order. First up is public comment. This is anything that's not on the select board agenda. I got a bunch of people. Yeah. Yeah. first. Um, so I'm here on behalf. My name is Ron Goodall. You didn't know that. And I'm here on behalf of Kimball. We've kind of start, we've started a, a new initiative at the Board of Trustees just to come and give you a you might have to um, update about what's going on in the library. So one of the things that I'd like to recommend to the board on behalf of the library, it's always kind of a conversation about what the value of a public library is to the community. And I know that Sally, when she came before, gave you, um, when she came last month, gave you a kind of a monetary breakout. Um, if you are further interested in that, um, there is a book called Palaces for the People that is a deep dive into public, the history of public libraries. There's also a podcast if you'd like kind of a shallower look. And the URL for the podcast is on there. It takes about 45 minutes, so it's a really good thing to listen to while you're commuting. Um, it's fascinating. Um, I think we often forget, you know, what, how, what a service libraries perform. And this not only does it talk about books and tapes and information, but it also talks about things like lending clothing to homeless people that are looking for jobs or the, the kind of daycare thing that is provided. Um, and really the expansion of the view that Andrew Carnegie had when he first began endowing, endowing public libraries across the country. So, so I highly recommend it. Um, and the second thing, I have my, I have my notes here. Um, wanted to, to say, you probably went by the library um, on May 2nd and saw Harry Potter Day. And there were people waving lawns and playing Quidditch all over the library lawn. Um, and having a wonderful time. The event was attended by more than 100 people mm -hmm. of all ages. So it was pretty awesome. My guess is that it will continue. And there were kids out there today playing wizard. So, so it clearly reached um, a lot of people. Um, we also, um, on May 7th, screened a film called Endgame, um, and it's not about the Avengers. Endgame it was a partnership <laughs> with, well, really, um, partnership with Gifford, and the, the, the movie is about end of life. Um, and there were, I think Amy said, about 19, between 19, 19 or 20 people that came to watch that. It's a pretty pertinent topic. You know, it's certainly something that we have gone through in my family personally and, and are looking at again as you know, parents age and, and we move through how to support them with some grace and dignity and to keep the medical system responding to them with, with some grace and dignity. Um, we have upcoming a couple of things. Um, one is a book discussion group. There are actually three that I wanted to point out. Two of them are on here. Um, the New Jim Crow um, is a book about racism in America and the posit is that it's, it's still here, you know, and we kind of all know that it's still here. It just looks different from the way it did when the Klan were riding up and down the streets wearing white clothes. Um, and we should never forget that that was an issue in Vermont as much as it was anywhere south of here. Okay. Um, so that, that's coming up on June 4th. Um, we are, because we are concerned about, we're concerned about the people that use the library, but we're also concerned about the people who don't. Um, and that's been a conversation that we have had in this room a couple of times. Um, and so we are having a focus group that anybody is welcome to attend of people who don't use the library <coughs> on a regular basis. Not necessarily that you're against the library, you don't think there's value in the library, or any, you know, that it's a one more expense for the town, but just that you don't go in the door to find out what might get you there. And then the last thing, um, and we, I, we don't have a start date for this yet, because it's mine, um, and it, I have things going on outside of uh, work and the trustees, um, is we, we are going to be starting a discussion group of podcasts. If you take a look at the, if you're on social media and you take a look at the library Facebook page, 
there's a very lively conversation about the um, proliferation of podcasts and about the kinds of topics that they cover. Um, I don't listen to a lot of them, but one of the ones that I do listen to, and I actually listen to it with my 89-year-old father-in-law, is Brave Little State on NPR. And we've had some <coughs> amazing conversations about the eugenics project in Vermont that ended in the early 90s. Um, it was designed to kind of obliterate Abnakis from the state. And about how roads were named. And about the origin of the Vermont accent. And all kinds of things. So it's a pretty far, that's, that's the one that I'll be, the discussion group that I'll be leading. So there's stuff, you know, and we encourage you to come in and use the library and check out the stuff. And I really encourage you to do the pod, listen to the podcast. It's pretty awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this is I, this is going to go on record as the first select board meeting that I have come to that there haven't been three million people <laughs> So I'm going to go. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Well, my name is Irene Rich, in case um, some people here don't know me. And um, I've been a longtime resident of Randolph. I've um, invested my life living here. Um, so I'm here to tell you about my new business. It has three parts to it um, that helps to make it sustainable. Um, the first part is my anchor, which is childcare. Um, I'll be taking up to 10 preschool children. Um, the second part is a supervised indoor play space um, for inclement weather. And the third is an enrichment center for movement in, movement in the arts. Um, the, this includes like um, dance classes and other kind of similar classes. Um, and it also includes, um, well, what I'm really excited about is we're having a, um, a, a movement class that, is, um, that teaches Spanish through singing and, and uh, movement, which is pretty exciting. Um, I also plan to offer workshops um, on Saturdays for children with area artisans and, um, you know, um, tradesmen. Um, so I'm in the final process of the, the daycare is my anchor, and I am in the process of um, trying to become licensed as a home provider. I live, I own a uh, condominium, Unit C of Trillium Building on um, Pleasant Street, and um, I live there as well, so I have, to be, um, I have to be a home provider. And that's okay because I only wanted to take 10 kids anyways. <laughs> so um, I have, uh, so I, I'm doing that, and the, the thing that I'm running up against is one of the regulations, a uh, home provider, if I want to be licensed home provider, then I have to adhere to um, stricter regulations and rules and meet those, and I have, and I'm in my final stages, I said, but the problem is I do need an outdoor um, playground. And um, I can take the kids to the park, but we also have to, um, we also have to go to the heathen then. So um, these are young children, they're preschool children and younger, um, what they call infant toddler. And um, by the time we get to the library, it's pretty much in the winter time, time to come back. Um, same thing in the, in the heat of the day. Um, we can't stay out very long. So, um, so that, that makes it um, hard. And um, I can use the playground, um, and I have been using the playground. I've been babysitting. Um, and it's just, it's fine, but um, it's not sustainable without an anchor. And so I'm here to, um, to, to ask the town of Randolph for the possibility of using or purchasing two one hundredths of an acre, which is a thousand square feet, um, which is, would be in the back of the municipal parking lot, which is um, next to um, my building um, and my fire escape. Um, I thought I would put it on the easement piece that um, John Randolph has granted um, the Trillium Condominium Association. Um, but that space now has snow from the um, solar panels that come down, and it's too dangerous of a spot to do in the wintertime, and I do have to have a year on um, outdoor field. So I'm asking the town of Randolph to consider, to consider my, my need. And, um, and if they would like more information, uh, I can provide a professional drawing and other, other um, things that you may need to consider. 
Yep. Yes, I have. Maybe it's something for you two to get together. We have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come back with a plan if it would be viable. Yeah. What I, I don't know about how you get on the agenda. You enter information and Josh, if it's complete and ready for the board. Okay. And it comes right Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it would be in the back next to the bank, and the interruption would really be two to three parking spots, and it would also be where the town, um, you know, can you know comes and plows out there. But the problem I have with the town coming up and plowing there actually is that um, it's they block my fire entrance, and so two to three times a winter I have to go out there and shovel an awful lot of snow. Um, just to um, to clear that space, it would be right next to that, and yeah, it would be a thing. Back of that. Okay. <coughs> that was easy. Anybody else on the public to be heard? Everybody else is on the agenda. Okay. So we have approval of the agenda. I have a few items to. Ask the, the board to consider changing on the agenda. Uh, actually, the first is my sister's here, and our family friend Johnny made it. So, I'm going to point them out. Okay, California, not yeah. Randall. Yeah. Which item on the agenda are you on? Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the weather. Yeah, manager's report. <laughs> Buying dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Buying dinner. There you go. Yeah. 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 Uh, or you're making dinner. One of the other. <laughs> Uh, the three items that I'm hoping that the board would consider changing uh, two fall under appointments and the third fall under new business, uh, which we could probably add under other business. Uh, one is uh, to consider adding a subcategory to appointments, which would be the East Valley Community Group. Um, that would include the proposal to potentially create a new committee uh, to work on the East Randolph Community Hall uh, renovation project as well as appointing members to that committee. Uh, the second item under appointments would be a lister candidate that has since uh, sent a request to be appointed to the lister. Uh, his name is Dennis Brown. Um, he's been a long, long time member of the community in Randolph. And the third item is related to the appointment of the listers. It is um, uh, an item from the listers that needs to go to the Department of Taxes, which would be to um, put their stamp of approval on our 2019 grand list. The deadline is January 4th. Um, this uh, form would ask for a one month extension so we wouldn't have to file our finalized grand list uh, with the state until July or before July of 2019, essentially giving us another month and a half to complete the form. And it is essential that we consider appointing Dennis as uh, one of our listers as two signatures are required on this uh, approval for the grand list that is sent to the Department of Taxes. Bit of a mouthful there. The grand list extended deadline will have to put under new business. New business. I would say that the lister candidate is already covered by <coughs> appointments. Too. Appointments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I um, make a suggestion? Not advancing topics here, and I guess you, um, I don't know if we need to wait till the very end of the agenda to interview her, because I guess she has to. You said you have to be somewhere? I would have to leave by 7.30. I don't know what, okay. I don't know how long the meeting is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to <laughs>
that there was one place where you and Mr. Broussard. Hey, it's the times. <laughs> we go back and forth. Sometimes I do like it. On uh, number nine, um, the vote to go into executive session, that's the one I voted against. Uh, three, one, zero. And also on number 10, um, my memory is that we only voted on the personnel policy. I've talked with Perry and Larry about it. And I don't know what their thinking is now. I know before it was, they were a little confused too. We did both agreements through. What's that? We voted so, both of them. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Upon reviewing this, okay, I think what happened was I made the motion to do both pieces because that was what the recommendation was. So I made the motion to do the, both the personnel policy and the contract. Okay, so I misunderstood that. I thought okay, well, that's, 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 that's I'm pretty sure that's where I was because that was the recommendation at the time. So, what I think I did. Like I said, it's pretty jumbled. We do a lot of stuff here. Yeah. So I don't, I don't have a clear memory. No, I'm not. You know, I can't say that I'm 101%, but I'm pretty sure I'm 99.9 .9 that we've talked about doing both of those. And I made that motion simultaneously because we had to do both something with both documents. They're both yeah. actions that we needed to take. So I'm pretty sure that that's how it went down. Is there any chance of having two motions, or do you mean? No, I don't think I did it two motions. I think it was one motion. One. So I voted against that. Yep. And also, the, the recollection that you voted to not enter executive session. I know I did. So, okay. We'll, we'll look into that. So we can correct that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any other comments, corrections, which is the desired motion? Any questions on the warrants? Motion on the consent calendar. So I move to approve the consent calendar. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Representative? Yes. Yeah. We, sh we do have an update that I um, was expecting to bring up during appointments for Two Rivers Arguici. I received an email message from uh, one of our previous representatives, Winston Sadu. Uh, he has removed his name from consideration due to medical illness. Um, so uh, that's something that will come into play a little later, but because Ramsey's here, I thought I should mention that. Didn't we just get something saying you want it to be considered? He did, and he sent me a message today saying okay. he's choosing to withdraw his name. It was in the updated appointments that I saw a couple days ago. Right? Yeah. So this is newer. This is very, this was, this came in a few hours ago. Thank you. Yeah. Were you the, are you the rep now? One I of am. the two, yes, I am. correct? And so uh, Gary is and Gary stepping was, into Gary that. Gary was the other person that was expressed interest in that. <coughs> two. Um, special? We get two? Just are we principle. special, Peter? Yeah, of course you are. Thank you. <laughs> Make it sure you knew. Everybody gets <laughs> Yeah, I'll get the same answer. <laughs> Questions for Ramsey? No. What are tickets? Mm -hmm. I think if, if 
uh, the board would like some additional context. I think the board had uh, an interest in knowing which of the two candidates was uh, more interested in serving as the primary uh, representative as opposed to the alternate. Um, and those, that was essentially the question that, primary question, other than others that were being The form considered. shows that we get two and then the alternate. That's, a, that's an error. Yeah. It's one and an alternate, right? It is one and an alternate. Do you have a preferred position, the primary or the alternate? Well, I would prefer to stay the primary at this time. Um, I, I, I've been doing it for a while, and I've been learning a lot. I don't, I don't um, have a background in planning, but I've been uh, learning a lot, and I represent a different demographic than a lot of the other people who are there. And also, because of the job that I have, um, I have some perspective on the whole, almost the whole region matches up with the region that I cover for my, for my job. So um, I have some perspective on some of the other towns in the region, as well as Randolph. If the regional planning, if the RPC is going rogue and Randolph wants to go the other way, are you able to stand up and say, no, Peter, that's not the way Randolph wants it. We want this. As long as Randolph tells me what they want. <laughs> so how do you communicate back to us what's on the agenda and what you, when you need that direction? Um, I'm happy to do it any way that you wish. I had offered when I first became the representative to come to planning commission meetings, and I had spoken with Michael at the time and asked him to please let me know when those were happening because at the time they weren't. It wasn't easy to find out when they were happening. They were kind of. I don't know if they're a regular schedule now, but um, I have a fairly busy schedule. So if I don't know something's happening and I've requested to be informed and I'm not informed, then um, I probably won't be there, but mm -hmm. I'm very happy to make myself available um, if I know that that is desired. Great. Do you have a regular meeting? We well, do. The next meeting is a hearing set up to, re to discuss the town plan. So certainly you should come to that. And then after that, hoping that the Planning Commission can work on the zoning stuff related to the plan that we think we're going to get approved. So certainly would love to have your involvement there. So we'll make sure that you get notified. I'll see if I can get you on the email list. That would be great. That's that, what I that asked way you Michael have, for many times. You know, and I wasn't aware that you asked Michael, so now that I am, we'll see if we can include you in what's going on here. Okay, that would be great. Okay. Okay. great. Is everything that you talk about there planning? Is it planning commission oriented or is there stuff that's more town oriented um, you mean at the two rivers meetings um, it's I mean it's all it's everything it's the town it's the region it's how it all works together we hear updates about Vermont and various different things that we're looking at water quality roads all of that things that tie together transportation well no it's a lot of stuff and I think it'd be great to have you report back to the Planning Commission about you know what you're hearing obviously so that we have a better connection so that would be great I could also I think work it's with a bigger audience than the planning commission. yeah well i think it might need a bigger audience right. but i mean we start with that certainly yeah. i could also uh, offer to meet with you ramsey on a regular basis where as things come up you and i could have conversations about your your views on what's happening and uh, i could certainly include those in the manager's report um, yeah. in addition to potentially attending planning commission meetings and other their meetings as well. That works. I do think it would be valuable to have you planning commission meetings so that way when we're working on some stuff that has to be approved by Two Rivers, it would be helpful if you knew what our positions were. Yeah. That would be great. And you can come to the energy subcommittee meeting. Yes, you can. You can come to the what? Energy subcommittee meeting. That's all I need. Way more meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Add to my life. Thank you. That's how it works. <laughs> Yes, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> You're aware of that. <laughs> okay. So, so on that committee, we, we need a primary and a backup. So I'm happy with Ramsey being primary. And Gary was expressed interest, so I'd say we make him the alternate. And uh, mm -hmm. 
go for that, don't you think? Let's move on. Do it. Okay, so do you need a motion for that or specifically no, do that one? Or? Okay. Knowing they only get one vote if they're both there, all right? So they can arm wrestle over. Yeah, they can fight right over this. this. I think the primary gets the vote, but I mean, yeah. I would hope that we would communicate yeah. with each other. Yeah. If, there, if we had any differences, we would He goes to the Energy Committee it. meetings. Right. That covered. So there, there we go. go. <laughs> oh, there it is. There you go. You're off the hook. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, let's. We're on a roll here. So, uh, delinquent tax collector is that now Cliff? Uh, currently being uh, taken on by Joyce. She is agreed to do it temporarily, and those duties will then roll over to uh, Cliff's plate uh, next next cycle. Wait and do it next March. Not like you got anything going on, right? <laughs> yeah, got nothing going on. <laughs> Joyce has been very gracious in accepting that, and um, we do communicate on, on various things about that. Um, and it seems to be working really well. And but don't geez. break it right now. Huh? Don't break it right now. Don't break it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's not fix it. Okay, fine. I got enough things right. to fix. Uh, Forest and Parks have done their interview with Dan, and have approved the us appointing him. There is one form in the signature warrants folder that is required by the state, just a, an official signature saying that, yes, we okay. authorize Dan. Okay. Help officer, we're waiting on Dan, right? He connected um, to the current health officer, I've her name, Lori. Lori. Yeah. Lori. Glad to hear anything back from that. And we've got some time, right? Because that's time. Yeah. October or whatever. Yeah. That's the date she was going. <clears throat> Finishes the first one. Can I ask a question? Yep. Is, is the fire warden actually a state position and we just recommend it? Is that how it works? Uh, it's actually a town position, but the state approves it. So, so they have to approve whoever it is. They have to. We could put somebody forward and they could say no, then we got to put the next candidate forward. So it's it's different than the others. Um, but the state does pay them $30 a year to do the job. So I guess we can say it's kind of a state position. We're just about as good as we are. I know because I have to figure out how to cash a little check like that. <coughs> and I've talked to Dan some about the fun that we've had. We've done it for Brookville now for I don't know how many years. Okay, White River Valley Ambulance. We're still looking for an alternate. Mm -hmm. No takers there, huh? Yeah. We're looking for somebody for capital planning. We have a new opening on the conservation committee. Anybody's psyched and ready for that one? So, mm. DRB. Uh, for this one, we had Adam wanting to step down to an alternate, and we have John Hart wanting to step up into a full time. We also have uh, Bill McGrath, who's sitting in the audience right now, that would love to take that vacant slot. Oh, I heard. He's shaking his head, yes. So I think that's a we're good. <coughs> All right. Anybody have any concerns with those? No. Uh, late. So John Hurt, Hurt goes up to be a regular. That's like a, just so you know, that's a long-term sentence. Oh, I see. <laughs> I did 20 years, so welcome on board. Okay. Economic Development Council has an opening. Planning Commission, looks like we have a full roster there now. We do. Where's the recreation? We have uh, <coughs> two vacancies and two people interested. We had expressed wanting a member of Rasta mm -hmm. on, and Paul Ray has offered to take that slot, and Kyler Grace has sent in a letter of interest. Okay. Mm -hmm. for those two? <coughs> Both yep. recommended by the uh, rec director. 
Okay. And we're good with all the planning commission people because Marty wanted to make sure those were all official motions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, just to be clear, though, when we appoint these committees, we're not appointing somebody to be the chair. Right. So, even though it says chair after it, we are not selecting who the chair of these committees are. So, should we have a motion to approve all everybody if we decided on? Yeah, but we have a new committee that's being requested to be formed too. To add to this, so this is we've done this in the past with the fire station and other buildings that are large undertakings. We've appointed a committee to do it. Um, so the, the group that's been working on that is asking to be recognized as a formal town committee, which I think is good. Um, with a select board liaison, they've given us a, a list of folks that they'd like to see on that committee. Any problem adding that committee and that list of candidates? Understood. Good. And I will swallow it and take this for me. On I was hoping side. you would do that. Fine. <laughs> 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 I feel about that. Too. Sorry. Good. Good. Because Betsy needs popcorn. Oh, yeah. that would be a squash. All right. He was very Perfect. gracious and helped us. Thank you. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. So with that added on and the new committee formed and all those people on, I'll take a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion Aye. carries. Great. Excuse great. me. So you're approving the formation of the of the Valley Community Group. Yep. Yeah. And that roster of folks. Okay. And who would be the liaison? Or is that not figured out? You got it. Are you, you just won. I thought that's why you just went. Just oh, I didn't hear that. Oh, there you go. You just won the lottery. Okay. <laughs> Better listen more carefully. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. Now let's get back up. And under new business. Oh, wait a minute. We have a list or candidate. Dennis yes, one minister candidate. Yes, really that would be Dennis Brown, uh, who's interested in serving as a lister. He uh, has sent me an email of interest, which uh, his initial interest was verbally. Um, letter of interest was submitted today. I did not have time to print, but he has committed to at least eight to ten hours per week uh, to work uh, on lister duties. Anybody have any concerns with that one? Nope. Motion to approve the point? Could we have it so that he's in the longest term? When we face with this problem again, probably soon, so we can get him in yeah, the longest term that. and he might get that. Yeah. Sure. Put him in the long I'd make a motion that we put him in the, the longest term. Are we looking at a three year or two year? What is it? Probably two years. It's yeah, two okay. Years. It's two years? Okay, yeah. so a motion to put Dennis in for two years. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Staying. Good. Okay, um, are you going to make a motion for the planning commission candidates as requested by Marty? We or? did it when we approved the entire list as we changed Whole it list. tonight. Oh, I missed that. Okay, so. The motion was to approve the list as we changed it, adding the East Valley group uh, and their list of candidates. Okay. And then we just approved Dennis Brown okay. for two years as a lister. Next, we have a briefing from the finance director for the town of Randolph. Would that be you, Cliff? That would be me. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a preamble. Uh, uh, Chris, uh, uh, Cliff, sorry, Cliff. Uh, I answered to Chris. Too. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Sometimes I'm a high. Cliff has been really putting in a yeoman's work. Uh, since starting full time with the town, and even before then, um, and he and I have been going through a great number of things, and he's been really finding things that have uh, been hidden away for the better part of a decade, or if not longer. So uh, we're just really glad that he's been he's been on the job, uh, and even in the short time, he's already making uh, huge changes and identifying ways to become more efficient and effective in the finance department. So thank you for for doing it. Thank you for that, Adolfo. Um, so, 
not knowing how um, well versed you are in the financial world, what I'd like to do is start with um, an overview of how financial statements work, talk about the audit process when our audit auditors, our outside auditors come in and look at what we're doing. I want to talk about the auditor's letter to the board that you all received a copy of um, and what I'm doing to address all of these things. Um, so the first thing is how financial statements work. There's two primary financial statements. One is a balance sheet, the other is a statement of activities for our budget, um, more popularly known. And the balance sheet is a snapshot in time, so we usually take a look at that. That's our fiscal year end, June 30. And the budget maps the path to the next balance sheet. So it, it's, a, it's a roadmap for how we get from last year to this year. And I talk about all of that because it's important to know that if, if we've got inaccuracies in the beginning balance sheet, our beginning point, the only way to get to the ending point is to work those inaccuracies out through our budget. And so as I'm going through this, there are things that I'm fixing that are going to impact the budget. And there's, that's the only way we can do this. Because it affected prior year's budgets, but now we're stuck with running them through the current year. We go through a lot of work. We have a lot of transactions that run through our town. Um, and that's our budget. Some of it gets recorded as long-term debt. Some of it gets recorded as expenditures. And of course, we have a lot of tax collections. In the midst of all of those transactions, you can't help but have some errors. Mm -hmm. And what <coughs> happens is when those errors accumulate, we have the situation that we have right that I inherited where we've got a beginning point that's, that's not precise. When the auditors come in, it's our job, my job, to make sure that they get a clean set of books. And so they come in and they look at things and they test, they take a look at what we're doing. Um, they call it internal controls. That's accountant jargon for how are we protecting the town's assets? What are we looking for? How are we making sure that things are accurate as we do our work? As they go through, once they are satisfied that we have good internal controls, um, and I'll get to what they said about that when I talk about their letter, um, they will test transactions. And as they test the transactions, if something is recorded incorrectly or something is not recorded, they have this concept of materiality. And materiality says that if we've got a mistake and the mistake is significant enough so that it would change our mind about how we feel about our financial statements, then it becomes material. They only post adjustments when it's material. Um, so as they went through last year, and now I'm talking about the auditor's letter to the board, um, <coughs> the should back up a step because the auditor's letter to the board, I suggested that you read that first. Um, I suggested that you read certain pages in the audit report second. And then the most important part, as far as I'm concerned, about the financial statements are the footnotes because it tells the story of the numbers. And I'm not going to talk about the numbers tonight because I believe that you all want to hear where we are and what I'm doing. Um, and so we had a number of things. Um, that the auditors called out. Um, some of them were the fact that we were not reconciling our accounts on a monthly basis like we should. Um, and those are the things that I talked about where we don't have a good beginning point. Um, so we're not taking a good hard look when we close our monthly books um, and making sure that the numbers that are on our balance sheet are supported by other documentation. If it doesn't have support, it's not going to be there. It shouldn't be there. <coughs> each month since I've been here, 
Beachman. I've <laughs> 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 been here for a month, so I can't really say that. Uh, um, since I've been here, um, I have been, um, each, each time when we close the month of April, um, we are making sure that we are reconciling all of our bank accounts, all of our investment accounts, our taxes receivable and our utility billing receivable and making sure that those agree the subsidiary <coughs> things of what people owe us agree to our accounting records in the, on the whole. Um, there was also a number of transactions last year that were not recorded um, effectively and so the auditors recorded that activity <coughs> for us and that is part of the 25 adjustments that they posted last year as part of the audit. The, they talk about, in the audit report, they talk about a material weakness in internal control. What does that mean? It means that we could have an error in the financial statements that will not be discovered and corrected in a timely manner or go undiscovered completely. I take those very seriously um, because ultimately I report to Adolfo and subsequently to Five of You and ultimately back to the taxpayers. And so what am I doing right now to fix this? I am on a methodical journey to our accounting records to fix every balance that I can't support. And I am about halfway through. Um, a lot of the things that they called out in the letter to the governing board will fix themselves if we do these procedures. Um, I do, we are going to do a monthly reconciliation of all of our accounts. We are currently doing a daily review of balances that have a tendency to go awry. Um, one of the things because of the way we record transactions sometimes and if somebody uh, if a transaction gets returned from the bank we reverse it through the accounting records but we need to take an extra step to wash it out and, and completely reverse all of it so not all of it is done automatically most of it is but we have usually have one last step and i've been working with our treasurer's office to um, establish better communications and to establish procedures to deal with those issues as we as they arise. I am also um, got it on my to-do list um, to revamp our accounting system to make it more easily readable and more functional for everybody that uses it. I need to do that by June 30th because it's important to do it at the end of a fiscal year to um, have a look back. So if I do it at the end of a fiscal year, I can have two full years of a look back in the, in the new system. Um, that is a very high priority to make and to, I believe, for the town to for me to get that done. Um, I'll throw it back to all of you for any questions you might have of me, and I'll do my best to answer them. And if I can't answer them, I will certainly get you an answer. <laughs> Oh, one last thing. These audit reports, these re audit reports are not for me. They are a review of what my office is doing and what Adolfo's office is doing. And you should be getting copies of these as soon as the audit is done. You should be getting draft copies of them. And the auditor should be coming in here and talking to you directly. They should not be coming from me. And I speak from the standpoint of being on the other side of the fence as being an auditor, and I would always want to talk to the governing board. It's part of some of the controls that we would like to start implementing that uh, make a whole lot of sense. I want to make sure that uh, you are all completely aware of where we are, <coughs> uh, what some of the issues are, whether they're good or bad. Mm -hmm. um, I want to bring them to you. These primarily like coding mistakes, that kind of stuff? Um, you know, inaccuracies in coding or just allocation? Mm -hmm. 
It's probably a loaded question, isn't it? It is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I'll be throwing somebody under the bus. Okay, well, that's fine. We don't need to do that. Okay. okay. That's all I need to hear. We're just going to be making better use of the tools that okay. are available. Perfect. Remember, we had the struggle of getting financial updates. Mm -hmm. And then there was the power struggle between the budget committee mm -hmm. and the finance director's position of mm -hmm. whose job it was mm -hmm. to update the select board, so we got nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I know. I sat on the budget committee for a while. I get it. And that was clip on some other stuff, the East Randolph Hall of Money. Um, this all came up, and he was shocked that this board hadn't received the audit for the findings or any of that. Okay. So he agreed to come in and. Great. Well, it sounds like you're. What he was doing. And what that report was. I like you're right on top of it. Getting there. Great. This to view this is extremely long. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> By <that>? June 30th. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I have a couple of questions. That's okay. Um, do you have paper copies of the audit for us? I do. Um, I can get those to you. I did not bring them tonight. And if I'm interested, can I get a monthly update so I can follow what's going on? I don't know if anybody's been getting that now or the budget committee or um, Nobody is getting anything right now, Patrick, because um, I am not confident in the numbers. I have been very clear about that with our budget committee. Um, and I'm not willing to start giving out information that I believe is not completely accurate. And I am, um, again, I'm working diligently towards getting that accuracy. So right, get, right now I feel the ground is squishy. As soon as you get there, could you start getting sure will. Um, and did they just finish this audit? Was it February? Did I say that? Um, I think that's when the final numbers came in. I think they were waiting for the pension numbers to come from the state of Vermont. Yeah. Um, that's usually an actuarial converse, um, calculation. And they are notoriously late with it. Um, but they, the rest of the audit was done. If you look at the date on the letter, um, this was February 1st, but the date that they signed the audit report, I'm not sure if, if it's um, the same date. And I'm looking through. Of course, I can't put my fingers out. That's okay. Where I was leading to it, it sounds like we ought to have them in. Yeah, they, they dated it February. Um, my belief is that the audit draft, except for the pension numbers, was done quite a bit before that. Now, they may be reluctant not to not come in, to come in, reluctant to come in um, until they got a final report. We don't have a final this, this is a final report. Oh, okay. You yeah, I'm, I'm talking about in the future. Yeah. yeah. We have also discussed um, switching, or not switching, but the uh, audit process to have it go out to RFP. We have not had an RFP for auditors uh, in the last six years, was it? Roughly about five to six years. It's, it's um, been a while. It's actually mandatory under your federal granting. Yeah, we switch at least every three, or go out to RP every three years. So we are working on, we're going to start working on that as soon as Cliff has a little more, more uh, capacity. Pretty mm -hmm. quite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm on board with that. I think it's a good thing to have another set of eyes come in. Um, I think to have another set of eyes come in this year um, would complicate an already difficult thing. Mm -hmm. All right. One more question. Do we have to have a single audit every year, pretty much? Because Not every year. That is based on the amount of federal monies that we expend. Um, we need to expend, if we expend $750,000, we're required to have a single audit. So this wastewater plant, probably. Um, have to look at that. It did. But also remember that the grants that we receive for our ACDC also have thrown us into that category right. many a times. For the town, I would think. Even though it's just process. passing through the town, it yeah. is coming into us and we're the grantee. So that kicks us over many years. 
And oftentimes, if they know about the federal awards ahead of time, they can conduct that audit as they're doing the regular audit um, and do them parallel side by side. But this is not a single audit. So this is not a single audit. That's a specialized animal where they send a report to be kept in a warehouse somewhere. It's cheaper, right? <laughs> <laughs> We ought to look at the <coughs> years that we have grants that are coming in for Claire Martin Center or our ACDC. They ought to be paying the incremental cost for that okay. audit versus the town. Great, thank you. Can I ask a question, Trini? Sure. Um, could you tell us the sum total of the 25 adjustments? Uh, I don't have that number. Sorry. Okay. I have another question then. Will, yeah. will this report be made available to the public? The audit it's report? Mm -hmm. It's on our website. Yeah. It is, okay. Yes. And then you can compare it with the new one that comes in and see how much improvement he's made. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> well, you know, I, I said right along huh? that if I'm doing my job, all of this stuff goes away. But don't expect that we think it's all going to be gone by June 30th. Um, because there's quite a well, lot there. I appreciate that, um, but that's my goal. Yeah. It's great to have goals. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have goals. Like I said, you know, it's, part of it is fixing the process. I'm process oriented, and if I can fix the process, and the rest um, of it gets, goes away. The rest of it goes away, and it makes it easier. And to Adolfo's point about as I'm going through things, I'm. Um, I'm discovering ways we can be more effective and more efficient and, and not be in the situation that we're in right now where we're fixing things. And, um, you know, I was working on a, a piece today where I said, you know, why are we doing it that way? And I've asked that, I've asked that question of why, why, why many, many times. I feel like a broken record right now. And, um, and so those are good things. Um, sometimes there is a reason. And, that's fine because part of it is, you know, to your point, if it ain't broke, let's not fix it. And so I need to find out what's broke. And um, gradually I am. And um, as I go, I fix things. And it's not the first time I've done this type of work. And you all know that the last time I was in front of this board, that um, we talked about my tenure up in Williamstown for three years. And I had. Um, I inherited a similar situation, not quite as uh, broad in scope, um, but that was, I, I was able to get my arms around that for June 30th as well. And while, I'm, while some of the stuff I don't have to have done by June 30th, I'd like to have it done so we've got a clean set of books for our auditors. And a good start date. The beginning of a fiscal year is a good start date to, to start playing too. Great. Any questions? Here, just ask Cliff. Um, when you say that that you're you're tightening up processes and changing things so that they're more efficient, how 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 does how does that actually manifest? Like, what what kind of changes are there in the office or things that you're able to do that are a result of those efficiencies? Um, one of the things I talked about earlier was the communication with the treasurer's office. Um, we, we've established some. Um, channels of communication that allow us to fix some of the issues that we're cropping up and creating the situation that we're in. Um, the other is um, when we record our bond payments, um, there's, there's two components to that. One is to our debt service fund and the other is to our, our budget because it's, a, it's an expense of our budget. And my idea, of course, it's all been posted already except for one bond payment for the current fiscal year that we're in. Um, but when we record those bond payments um, to be paid, we have an opportunity to also post them against the debt service fund, which will make it more efficient and we'll know where they are and we're done with the transaction rather than waiting um, to fix it later. Mm -hmm. Communication is a big part of what we're working on. Training. There's training going on with the staff, yeah. mm -hmm. so they're coding things the right way. I don't know if anybody ever got in on the discussions that we had with the prior manager about 
fuel usage. It was always, I can't tell you until after the auditors come in how much fuel was used by highway and in Chandler and whatnot. And that is, like, that's strange because there are different line items in the budget. You should be able to code the expense to go right to that line item. The training to code to go to that line item is taking place now. So it won't be adjustments that have to be calculated for the whole year. And we'll be able to have that information as needed, basically, okay. instead of waiting. Did you, um, when we were doing the fire station, building the new fire station, where there was all these spreadsheets that kept coming in, this is how much we've expended on the different items, this is kind of where we're at with the revenue, this is where we think we're going to be. And I know I got into one of the public hearings and I was handed a spreadsheet from one of the people that was doing the spreadsheets, and I'd already been given the other one and they didn't match. So you're there, you're ready to talk about where we're at, and I got two different pictures. So that'll be gone. It'll all be in the accounting system where it belongs. So you can just hit a button and that chart of accounts will come out and tell you what you're doing. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. nice to have good information. Half the battle. <laughs> and, that, and that's part of the restructuring that I'm going to do with the accounting system. We make it much easier to drill down and get that information. Very good. Good luck. <laughs> Don't make your deadline. You know, it, um, Delpho was talking about the progress we've made, and it, um, I have to keep in perspective how long I've been here doing this. Um, sometimes that's a little bit challenging um, when you look at the, the work ahead and realizing that once my plan is to get through the entire accounting system and then go back and just make sure that I've got it all and then move on to the next big job, which is restructuring and redesigning our accounting system so that we can get at that information that we badly need. You folks can't make good decisions if you don't have timely, accurate information. Right. And neither can the budget committee. So they can't work on budgets without having current stuff. That's true, and I, and I did meet with them and, and Larry um, last month, um, and we've had a discussion about whether or not I can provide information, and I said I see no good purpose for that right now until I can get things really get things cleaned up and get things accurate, and, and then we can have something really to talk about. Because they're going to identify a lot of the same things that I'm identifying, and. And it's not going to be a very productive meeting. <laughs> so. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Next, we have the wastewater plan expenditure funds. Uh, as we've shared with the board in the past, there are, um, there's a considerable pot of money remaining on our USDA grant for the construction of the water wastewater plant. Uh, the funds that remain available, uh, we would like to use, um, and uh, we've identified several equipment purchases that we could purchase under <coughs> small purchase items list for the USDA. Um, the total amount that we are anticipating uh, in an expenditure is two hundred sixty-four thousand one hundred seventy-four dollars. And these items, um, one item has been approved by USDA for purchase. The other items have not yet been approved for purchase. So we're asking the board is the authority or the authorization to make these purchases with the contingency that or the contingent that they are approved by USDA and fully reimbursable at that point. So if they are approved and the board authorizes us to do so, we will purchase them. If they're not ultimately approved by USDA, then we will not make the purchase. Sounds good to me. I just have a, have a question that there, I'm kind of curious. The remote meter reading. I know that my understanding is that that's something that the the water department was has wanted for a while and was hoping to get sometime in yeah. the next few years. And so this is basically we're seeing this money as an opportunity to to get that that item on that wish list now instead of waiting. Yes. That right? we, that's correct. There, it, it, there is um, a component to that particular piece of technology and the, the items that need to be purchased are for the wastewater plant. The argument that we were making to USDA is that we don't, uh, we don't need to read wastewater. 
And one way for us to be able to more accurately read wastewater is to determine how much water is actually going into or through our meters. And this technology will help us become more efficient in our reading of the water usage, which we can then use the data to extrapolate wastewater uh, amounts. So it's a bit of a stretch, but we're hoping that USDA will see it our way. Try. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. do, we, do we anticipate that it'll make the reading more cost efficient too? Like it'll actually yes. be less money to spend to send people around me reading meters? It would take less time. Uh, right now we have employees would have to either go inside properties or go into certain areas that just will take longer. Uh, this, this technology will allow us to just meet readers, not necessarily having to go into the property, but remotely from outside the property. So we can just walk down the walkway as opposed to go inside a home. Be much more efficient for our staff. We have had claims uh, in the past of workers' comp issues of some of our staff falling on icy driveways in the winter. Um, Less dog bites. Fewer dog bites, absolutely. So <laughs> this this could be a good piece of technology for us to incorporate if we're able yeah, to. That's, okay. that's great. Is this a system where they just have to drive through the neighborhood? Uh, I don't know if it's as um, advanced as us just driving through. It may require us to be on the sidewalk or a little closer where we can be closer to the home, but I'd have to speak with Chris, our water superintendent, to see if we can do that. Just drive down. There's something that you can do over the telephone, too, I think. Maybe the different prices. I don't know how far they've gotten. And stuff like yeah, I'm not sure the capacity yet. And then the centrifuge set piece that broke last year that was high cost item. Uh, uh yes, the yeah the gearbox centrifuge. Yeah. yeah. This would be the spare the spare part. Approve the expenditure of the balance grant as indicated through items one through four on the pending list. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 An advertisement, uh, their banner on, at the gazebo, similar to last year. Uh, the board uh, uh, previously approved banners over the, the two wires over Main Street. We no longer do that. Now we are transitioning to hanging banners at the gazebo uh, for advertising and events. And we received this application from from the event sponsors. can't approve these and we have to deal with these every month? No. Nope. Make that like your motion. On the, just on the banner? Well, yeah, the banner stuff for sure. I mean, I, yeah. I'm thinking, why would we, why do we need to do this every month? Right. That's a great question. I mean, it's not like we have to. Why don't we just give Adelpha the authority to ask all the questions and make sure they do what they're supposed to do and take the banner down when they're supposed to and we don't have to deal with this on a monthly basis. Nobody has to wait for us to do it. I agree. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve this one. Okay, we'll do that first. I'll second the approval of the this banner. particular motion. Right. <laughs> okay. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So, now I'd like to make a motion to give Adolfo the authority to address the banner situation with any applicants who want to put up a banner. So, to banner approve place. banner placement, yeah. I just want to see why we need to Sounds like a pretty heavy responsibility. I know. I got, <laughs> I got a few more I'd like to give you. So we'll start with some more. Okay. We'll start out small. We'll start out small and work our way up, 
Okay. <laughs> I just I just think it's you know some of the stuff we deal with here is we can spend our time. You're you comfortable with us at all? You okay I with this? You can handle it. <laughs> okay. Good. I think I can. If Shannon Shannon can help me. Yeah. <laughs> Shannon, Shannon does an awesome <laughs> job over there. That's right. So go <laughs> over it. So I guess I heard that was a second, right? That was a second. Yeah, exactly. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Perfect. Abstain. Motion carries. Central <coughs> permit application for the downtown block party. Hi, everyone, guys. So, I have some maps for everybody. Or, we actually updated them a little bit. They're also easier to read, they're bigger. So we had an idea we would just go through the permit, but for brevity's sake, we're open to suggestions if there's a preferred way of handling this. And then just give the basics of what you're looking to do. Okay. Okay, so we have contacted the Sheriff's Department and have two officers who will be there to shut down part of, well, the highlighted blue part of Pleasant Street and then half of Prince Street up to the Randolph House driveway. Um, so specifically, small section of Pleasant Street and Bridge Street forming sort of a key there. Mm -hmm. So that will be used as festival space. We also have permission from two condo associations to use their parking lots as festival space. And we're using an RACDC property as festival space as well. And the two condo owner associations are the Trillium lot and then the Prince Street Condo Owner Association? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so the main request today is uh, really just to inform you that those two roads will be closed for this event. And so you need, you need a, a board vote we do. To, close, yeah. yes, to close those streets. That's it, right? But it's not on the public. This has been through Orange County and Yes. Department. Uh, I I don't have the signatures yet. I know the conversations have ha have happened, but I haven't seen something on the signatures. So, um, what, what one suggestion that we can make to the board is contingent upon contingent the upon board. the approval of all the appropriate people: fire department, sheriff's department, highway department. Yeah, because yeah, it. Yeah, just want to make, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure absolutely. Right. No, right. Sure everybody's on board with that. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple of locations here that would be inaccessible for fire equipment, which yeah. would be a challenge. So speaking to that really quick, we've been communicating with Mike Goldenbrand. Yeah, okay, that was my question, yeah. Yeah. And the trouble. The guy's trouble. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, we're looking to invite as many groups as we can to sort of use the event as a volunteer recruitment day. Yeah, I already volunteered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not sure if Michael will be there himself, but somebody yeah. from the fire department. Yeah, it's me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I already decided this. Yeah. <laughs> already got a sign. Sounds to me like you're golden here. Okay. That is really all we have for you. So. All right. Entertain a motion to close Prince Street. Incredible pleasant. Segment of Prince and Pleasant. Well, it's two different on June 1st, unless it rains, correct? Yes, and then it rains. And then you want to close on June 8th. And I'm guessing that your time isn't noon to 5. It is. No. It's probably closer to 10, somewhere in there, to give people a chance to set all that For up. Preparation times? I right. guess. And probably until seven or eight o'clock at night for cleanup. For right? cleanup, yes. Uh, yes, the street I believe is going to be reopened at six. And the many vendors that are there can still work around traffic issues. 
something similar to what Chandler's done in the past. Yeah. Yes. And we do have the trillium lot, which is private, and so if there's any activities continuing most of it. They'd be over there. They'd be over there. Yeah. So you're looking for a 10 to 6, probably? Uh, ideally, okay. Yes. Sounds good to me. I'm good to it. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the closure of Pleasant Street and part of Pleasant Street from 10 to 6. On June 1st. On June 1st or June 8th. Contingent upon approval? Yes. Not that piece, please. Yeah. This is the group motion. First. Yeah, we all yeah. share oh, these things. I'm holding your Perry's name, though. Yeah, just throw my name out there. <laughs> <laughs> I can get in trouble than anybody else. <laughs> motion, you need a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We have request, or we have received a request from Green Mountain Economic Development Corporation uh, for tax stabilization for their uh, soon to be fully operational facility, uh, which will house LED dynamics on Beamer Road. Um, we have Bob Haynes, Director of Green Mountain Economic Development Corporation here, as well as uh, Bill McGrath, um, who is principal at LED. They both have been working with Josh over the last several weeks on this proposal and uh, handed over to all three if, if the board would like to ask questions. I, I can say that um, we met with Josh and we met with Ed French to talk, uh, excuse me, uh, Ed Luce to talk about the uh, current value for the property. We came to terms on a number that uh, I think Ed and Josh thought was reasonable and we do too. What we're asking for um, is an abatement similar to the one that um, was uh, offered to Freedom Foods, our immediate neighbor. Uh, the difference is there's no uh, deferral of the school tax uh, component because that's not uh, provided by the state anymore to reimburse. So we're asking for a municipal abatement um, on the same uh, rationale that Freedom Foods was uh, granted which would be um, no taxes for five years and then an escalation to 100% value of $3,275,000, I think was $3,227,500 um, was the number we came to for a fair market value. Um, that was supported by the appraisal that was used to, um, for our community development block grant. Um, we're very happy with the building. Uh, it's coming in on budget. Um, it is, uh, we got a certificate of occupancy up several weeks ago. Um, LED is in the process of uh, moving their equipment and their processing uh, line. I think there are some production has actually uh, commenced there. Um, we're going to have a ribbon cutting and a grand opening on June 5th, which is a Wednesday, late afternoon. Uh, we're inviting all of you and the, um, the other team members who were part of this process. Uh, we're hoping that the governor and Senator Leahy can join us and Congressman Welsh and uh, Senator Sanders. We're not sure. We don't have any confirmations from anybody yet, uh, but we're, we're uh, hoping that they can come with some of the other uh, partners in the state who helped us. So um, we're very proud of this partnership that we got. The, the Community Development Block Grant enabled this project or it wouldn't have happened. Um, we were uh, able to retain a very uh, important employer uh, in town, has 54 employees now, uh, projected to add 45 in the next five years. With uh, an annual contribution, we estimate over the next five years of you know, 15 to 16 or 17 million dollars to the Randolph economy, which, which is factored as 75 percent of the salaries in addition to the, the other spending that the employees would make that, um, and company spending that's not related to the cost of production. So we think it's a good model um, for the kind of facility that's needed. Um, we think that it'll help them successfully recruit employees, which is uh, a critical issue that everybody seems to be fighting no matter what business they're in. Um, we think it's an important part of the revitalization of Randolph. 
Um, I'm spending a lot of time here. Uh, I'm enjoying the time that I'm spending here and i um, happy to make this presentation um, to your board and uh, would hope that you would um, uh, understand it and, uh, and accept it. Um, we have a strong working relationship with Adolfo and we've gotten to know Josh really well. He's working overtime on lots of different things. So it's, it's great to have a partner like that to help um, stimulate the community development in Randolph. Great. <clears throat> so not to date myself, but I was part of the Freedom Foods plan that we did. We looked at multiple models, and in the end, it seemed like the model of going no taxes for five years gave that span of time. They, of course, got the state break too, which has since dried up. Yeah. Um, but it gave the right amount of time for all the additional costs that are incurred, not only when you construct the building, but moving in, adjusting all the little things that have to take place. And it gave that span of time to then start incurring the tax bill incrementally. And LED has a lease uh, that will go for some period of time until uh, we can find a successor tenant um, for the space that they're in in Wall Street now. So, right. um, yeah, we're going to be in both places for a while. We're juggling a lot of balls right now, and we're trying to do everything we can. Vita was terrific in, in recognizing that and supporting us. And um, so, again, we, we hold this out as a, as a model for the kind of partnership that um, we're looking to do um, more of. So. And we're excited. Our first product's going to ship tomorrow. Oh. Forward looking statement. <laughs> so I have, a, I have a question. Sorry. No, there's already one up. We took one for you, Dan. It seems like the the point of tax stabilization is to give businesses who are looking to expand or come to Randolph or do something, you know, big that that they wouldn't otherwise be able to do, but for that tax stabilization. Um, this building's already built. Um, this wasn't something that was part of the original plan. I, I don't really understand why you're coming now for, for this. Yeah, um, it's an old conversation that's been going on for some time. Um, and um, I don't know if that's an excuse, um, but that's the reason. So this, this has been a conversation that we've been having, um, I had with Adolfo's predecessor and what we discussed with them. So, uh, While there is no guarantee that you guys will grant this, it has been part of the plan that we were really hoping would be able to make this affordable for us because right now we're certainly right on the edge of, you know, was it really worth it when we ran into having to add fire sprinklers when we designed it without and things like that. So we've incurred a lot of extra costs um, at the 11th hour here that are related to, you know, that we'd like to get back in town. And it's only fair what you did for other businesses. It's important to you. We'd love to hear. Have that privilege. Mm -hmm. And you're just now getting a building that can be raised. <coughs> yes. To know what that impact and what the numbers were, too. It is the right time for them to actually come. You don't do tax abatement before you know what the impact and what you're looking at. Freedom Foods, I think, was in and operational by the time we did theirs. Well, I just want to clarify, tax abatement is different than tax stabilization because traditionally tax stabilization request is at the beginning of a project. Tax abatement is usually... After you've issued the building. A, a, you know, we could, anybody who's owned a building can come in here and, and do tax abatement. So th there is a two differences in those two things. We as a community have done this before. I mean, this is not the first time. Freedom Foods long before that, you know, we, I'm pretty sure we gave Vermont Castings the same treatment when they built the foundry here years ago. So I think that, you know, in my mind, this is perfectly appropriate for us to do as a community and bring in jobs to the community. And I think that's something that we need here desperately is the opportunity to employ more people. So I, my personal opinion is, is, you know, we've done it for other businesses, we should do it for this one. So where do, where do we draw the line? What if anybody decides that they want to expand and they want us to? I don't, I don't know if we draw the line. I mean, we want to promote growth here. I mean, we need to, I, we are not a healthy community. This is how we get healthy. So in my mind, you know, 
this probably won't be the first request. I think we need to look at this long and hard to figure out, you know, what are the other economic benefits coming here other than the taxes this might generate in the first five years. So down the road, you know, I'm, I'm supportive of this kind of stuff because I've, over the years, watched, you know, literally hundreds of jobs leave this community. And it's had a devastating effect. And I think we need to have any tool we have in our toolbox to encourage this is what I feel we need to do. To, to Perry's point, this is actually one of two requests that I've received in the last month. So next month's like board meeting, we'll be reviewing another uh, request. The other positive is it's not on the tax rolls right now. Just seven acres of land, right? Yeah. Yeah. So at the same time, you've got Freedom Foods is coming off, so their tax revenue is starting to come in. Gifford's development is paying in, and they're going to an increased value this year. So you're still going to see revenues coming in. It's if you were looking at something that was already on the tax rolls, <coughs> and you're looking at removing it because somebody's remodeling that job or whatever, then your impact's different. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that that's not something we would still consider, but I think you look at it different then because you've got an actual loss of current revenue versus this is new revenue. Well, I, I mean, that's delayed you know, when you're going to get it. I don't know. I, I prefer not to really look at it that way because I think businesses need to be, feel like they're treated fairly. And so we can't tell on business, so well, we did this for you guys, but we can't do it for you because this property is, you know, is doing this right now with the taxes, and it, it, I think we need to really treat, you know, very, all the business entities pretty much, you know, the, the same way. Um, and um, it's if you know if we want to encourage this in in this kind of way, you know, I, I would like to see us have the a bigger policy and not something that we do on a case by case. Policy is out there actually, and it is case by case. So we, we need to rewrite that yeah, maybe we do. policy. I think every case is different and unique, and the like environments change in terms of the economies, and so it's it's being able to react to every request and and, and judge that request at that time and place is really important. I don't think. A, one policy for everybody is going to work. I don't. I don't think that's right. That's 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 my opinion. And and I do believe that LED is an important um, asset to the region. Um, I would I would ask, what are the average wages of, of the jobs that are going to be um, filled over the next five years? Um, I assume that at least half of them will become Randolph residents, taxpayers. Um, so that is additional growth that they would have on, on the tax base. And it is important, yes. It, it, one of our economic de development goals is to grow the tax base, and tax stabilization is a tool for, for economic development professionals to ensure that that happens. Um, so they are a great asset to the community, and um, I would just you know think about that. Um, <coughs> other communities do it around the state. Um, you know, to varying degree, um, and, if, and if you're concerned about how other communities might um, do it, you know, certainly I would investigate that. But it is a tool; it is used widely, um, successfully, um, and I think in this case it, it should be really considered uh, in a favorable light. <clears throat> I can have a Jason question, actually, Jeff, Bill, and Josh. Out of the last 10 people that you've hired, how many have actually lived in Vermont, uh, in uh, Randolph? Um, in the past month, we've hired three people, and they're all transplants that are moving here permanently. Into Randolph? Just in the last three, so I'd have to think harder about the yeah. ones we hired before that, because most of the ones we have just stay. Right? We don't really replace people. So. Right. We started the inside sales rep who's a transplant from Massachusetts. We hired a new CEO who's a transplant from Colorado. We'll be looking for a house here. <coughs> Pretty decent pay check for him as well. So we'll be getting the taxes back very fast. Right. And um, 
another engineer that we pulled in from out of state, so actually three out of towners that are moving here. Good. And then the other thing is that, you know, it was a pretty split decision about whether we stayed in Randolph or not. Even with these incentives like this, it was the board was split, and I had to take cast the tiebreaker and say, we're staying here. The, the factors against us were the, the school's ratings to get this guy who's a CEO, you know, they come and look at us and they want a great school for their kids, so they got to, you know, go to New Hampshire or something like that to get that, and which is a real problem for our town. Um, there's no hotel within half an hour. It's absolutely unacceptable for a business that's <coughs> becoming our size. Mm -hmm. So the real story we're telling now is, yes, we have a new building here. We're already going to fill it up pretty quick, and we want to create those jobs here, but there's some pressures that if we don't fix some of these other problems, we may have to open up another facility in there. You know, so we're still trying to grapple with that. I'm very optimistic about our town. I think we've got an awesome town, an awesome select board, and I really, um, I, I was made my bet, so I'm a little biased. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping that we can, this is the beginning of a moment to a really better thing. And I apologize, I was moving equipment a couple hours ago, so I'm all still in work mode. <laughs> 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 I was taking down tents. <laughs> but we're excited about <clears throat> moving in there. So anyway, I hope you guys will see your way to give us a little break to get started again. It's a delay in taxes, and, and we, um, you know, certainly will be contributing in a lot of ways during that delay um, in software. Any more questions? I think uh, bringing middle income jobs in, especially from uh, a STEM perspective, this is my personal and you know, professional kind of stuff, um, it only enhances our ability and then hopefully has some influence in our school systems because I, I agree, I think our, our STEM program needs some work you know, to grow our young people into science and technology. So I think bringing more folks that have these technical skill sets to the region and the area is going to put more of a demand and more more resources to the school that allow them to do that. So definitely in favor of supporting that. So in your spare time, you're going to run to be on the school board? <laughs> 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 no, but maybe one of the folks that you hired might. You know? This, this, this is but it is somebody's job spec. This is my, you know, I, I share this. I mean, it's all about building a community here. You know, so, you know, we need, you know, good businesses and good neighbors that are attracting, you know, other people to come here. And so I think that this is this is certainly one of them, and I think we should be able to help. We were started here, and so like I said, I'm totally behind this. So. And there are intern, interns, high school interns who are working at LED, yeah. and there are B2C <coughs> interns who are working at LED. So it's a real. And there's you know people that start at minimum wage. Nobody ever stays there for more than three months. If they stay with us, you know, as production workers, they instantly move up to what the new minimum wage is going to be at least. So. Um, but then we have the high tech workers and we have managers. So we kind of have all three. There's, you know, median income is a big slice. We take everybody from didn't graduate from Randolph High to, you know, obviously masters and doctorates. So um, it's kind of an interesting, there's really no one type of typical employee that we have that we're creating jobs for. So this is always geared. And I but guess we, we've sorry. definitely had, um, you know, recent, even bigger step up with the high school and the technical center there to, uh, Absolutely. You know, I think we, especially as other businesses in the area, could start coordinating those activities. But there's yellow school buses coming into our parking lot every day now, even our old spot. And our new facility gives us a lot better way to have a classroom experience for them. So um, we'll inspire. And like I said, it used to be you had to go to college to be having a good job. Now we've got, you know, at the vocational level or at the college levels, we've got options. And a little anecdote, the new CEO is an interesting guy who's in Colorado. He's worked for a couple of other high-tech companies, and he is over the moon about the quality of this facility. He said he could not imagine how uh, nice it was when he got here. It, it, it far exceeded his expectations for a company of this size. So he's going to help grow it, and uh, he's got the tools there to do that. So, so when do we get a tour? June 5th. June 5th. June 5th. Yeah. You'll only get a formal invitation.
five thirty in the morning. I've got some work to do between now and then. Yeah. <laughs> and Josh, I guess one of the um, <clears throat> thought was, you know, when we look for folks to come here, I, we we were kind of challenged some of the stuff. Bill is why why live in Randolph, and I don't know that. You know, I have a, I struggle answering that question sometimes to our folks that are coming from Maryland, D.C., you know, North Carolina, whatever. So I don't know if there's some some way we can start collecting some thoughts on those and say, you know, something that we could give to our businesses out there. Say, this is why we want to live in Randolph, right? These are the positives. These are the neat things. These yeah, are, this been, is where the community is going. We've been discussing this with uh, the Economic Development Council, okay. um, and we had a meeting on Monday, and and we sort of. Uh, one of the things that I'm trying to hammer is is messaging. We have to craft our message. We have to figure out what that is, um, and then you know be able to produce it, you know broadly throughout government, um, our business environment, um, so that we can speak all with one message and provide the resources for businesses like yours when they're when they are hired. This is a reason why to move the brand off. I'd love to put in our recruiting packet, right? I mean, so yeah. Let me yeah. just slip in there and send down our email. Ca you know, castings, Gifford, yeah. everybody's looking for people and uh, honestly we have out. four job openings right now. I can't go. Yeah. <laughs> to Josh's point, I think a lot of a lot, a lot of what what has happened is just a lack of positive information flowing from the town and from our partners out to the community, which has kind of allowed this, oh, the schools are bad and this is bad. You know, we're not as bad as people say. I think it's just us not getting the good work. I completely agree. I meant the ratings yeah. they look up when they're looking at the Oh, right, no, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I think it's all false to us. The ratings. The school. Like the school ratings. Right, so I have several employees that I was trying to get to come here, you know, recruits that we, and they, they look at, you know, family looks at the school rating and says, oh, well, that's not for our kid. Because if it's not A+, plus, it's not good enough anyway. But, uh, you know what I mean? It's like those kinds of infrastructure things that, that they can find problems with. And those are things that, you know, really aren't fair. Yeah, our there's, schools work really hard. That's an obstacle. Other obstacles are things like not having broadband everywhere. It's, I hear this from realtors, you know, they'll show a house and the first thing the family's doing is picking up their phone and it's like, oh, look at that. What else do we see here? Huh. You know, those are affecting. Decisions made to move here. Third grader can't do homework. Yeah. Can't get online. Yeah. So I mean, so these are things. We, you know, this is all stuff that Josh is working on right now, and, yeah. and stuff that the R three group has identified. And there's a draft report floating around that if you want a copy of it, I'm more than happy to get it to you. I don't know if you've seen it yet. But <clears throat> it's it's what they, they you know they, their interview process of 26 businesses here identified the strengths and weaknesses of the community. Mm -hmm. um, I'm familiar with that. Report. You familiar with yeah. <coughs> so, so we're talking about similar stuff here. So you know this, my take is is we need to be able to maintain and and be you know good partners with the businesses and the community that are growing and trying to grow so that we can you know <coughs> move the ball further down the road here and, and bring more you know, more people to the community in lots of different ways. And so recreation's a key thing and employment's a key thing and our next struggle is gonna be housing and childcare. So we have to work on, they're already there, we just gotta figure out how to fix them. So it's just another piece of the puzzle. <clears throat> so back to the topic again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So the five years of no taxes and then 20% increment increase works good for you? Well. I mean, zero years for be 10 better, years would be great, <laughs> but to be consistent with what we've done in the past, and then it eases into the full. It helps us get a leg up, which is really, because it's very important, it's very expensive to build in the state compared to other areas. Other areas. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. part of what really helps us, you know, consider it to be somewhat competitive. I'm guessing it's not going to get any cheaper. Anybody have any concerns with doing that? Five years increased by 20. Anybody want to make a motion? Giving Adolfo the ability to negotiate the agreement? So moved. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? You got it. Thank you much. Adolfo on the agreement. Okay. I'm assuming we'll have to approve the agreement. No, we didn't give Adolfo the authorization to do it. It's a standard. Didn't realize. Either way. Is it okay? I'm not for it, no. 
You're not for it. No. You're I'm not for letting Adolfo negotiate the agreement. Correct. I'm so would you it. like? So what would you like? You'd like I'd it to come it. back and approve I'm, it. I'm happy with him negotiating it, but I'd like to see it before it's agreed. To. I I don't have a problem with that if that's what it takes to make everybody happy. Well, I think that's what's in our policy. Okay. Well. We would be fine with that if you beat Scamp on this let you know. So would you like to make a motion back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's our motion. Oh, well, can, we, can we amend it? Or? Well, the motion is to negotiate it. Yeah, right. negotiate it. So we're going to he's going to negotiate it. He's going to come back to us, we bring it back, and then we're, we're, we'll, we'll take care of the approval. Does that yeah. work for you? Yeah. You're happy with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm fine with that. Very good. Thank you much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. My it's important to me that we have no mask. Okay. 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 Yeah, I'm not totally fine with that. So I'm thinking we've got the agreement. I'm more than happy. Also, that everybody will be treated. Yep. I think we also ought to all look at the policy and see if we're still agree with the one that's I have a bit, so I mean, yeah, it could be sweet and it could be better, and it could be more favorable. So it's fine. And whatever if you want to do that, I'm good with that too. So I think we all love that. Yeah. I haven't seen him in a long time. He's still around. Okay. Next up. From the East Ferry Day. Next up is the 2019 grand list extended deadline. Have we ever met this on time without an extension? <laughs> Not that I'm aware. No. Um, if nobody meets this deadline, why don't they just set it for a different issue? But anybody got a problem with filing the annual? We're not going to make it. Give us another month. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstained? Aye. Aye. Next up is Two Rivers Briefing on Stormwater Improvement Design Grant. No action needed. Perfect. Wow. <laughs> Just want to listen we'll be to fast and fun. Thank right. you for having us. Thank you um, for waiting. Yeah, no problem. Uh, my name is Pete Fellows. I am a Two Rivers employee. And this is my boss. His name is also Peter. And <laughs> but his last name is different. I'm the human easel. Yes, he is the human easel. There you go. So we got a grant to do this a couple of years ago. It's now done. Basically, this is a quick study of the village of Randolph's um, smaller stormwater infrastructure. Not the big stuff. Uh, the big stuff is being studied by BNK on uh, Pleasant Street. I um, already set that up a few years ago. This is kind of the rest of it. Um, so if you turn, we'll cut to the chase. If you turn to the end of the report, which is this table, it's page 17, appendix one. Okay. These are the places we looked at. Um, basically, there's some highlights at the, at the bottom. Um, and what I did on this table is I kind of did the size of the little bitty watershed that the storm that is drain that that area of the village is draining, and the stormwater infrastructure that would be required to properly process the stormwater according to the state's new standards. Um, and then estimated the cost per acre and kind of put the cheapest ones at the top and uh, the more expensive ones at the bottom. And then a quick summary for only $100,000, uh, the town can treat 26 acres, which is a large portion of the village, um, with the first six sites. So that's, that was a pretty impressive number according to the um, consultants we hired. This project cost about 20 grand. The town didn't have to pay anything. We hired Otter Creek Engineering to do the uh, heavy duty stuff for analyzing this. And we also created, um, for the three uh, simplest areas that required no service 
investigation. They were just swales or sediment catchments, sediment four bays is the fancy word for it. Um, those three areas we did 30% designs on and uh, those are available. Um, and those are basically ready to go out to construction, up to bid. Um, there's little budgets associated with them. There's, here's a, a sample. There's a site plan for them. This is the one at the end of Lincoln Street. I was just down there. This, this is pretty scary here. You guys are familiar with that. And this is the, the kind of uh, typical section for it with all the um, construction notes. So those are available to you guys. Marty has seen them. Um, she was super helpful as well as um, your highway superintendent. He looked at them too. So when you're on your thing, it says mm -hmm. home, where it says right away private. Mm -hmm. Does that mean it's public infrastructure coming into right away we currently don't own? Right. It starts. It usually starts in your right away and then heads into private. You know, so the beginning of right the or easements, which right. makes it not so right. easy. Yeah. Um, in school, we don't care about. Right? Yes. Yeah, that is, right. that is bigger ones are not including the high school. The high school is going to have a lot of work to do. Um, across the state, which is a good segue into my one other thing I wanted to let you guys know before I leave. Uh, in the report on page, the other highlight here, we just have to go back to page. 13, so flip this around, my magic evil. Yep. So the state revamped its stormwater rules. Um, they're getting a little tighter. Um, and by 2033, there's going to be a new three acre rule. Any acres, that, any areas that the town owns that have three acres or more of impervious surface on them they're going to have to retrofit those areas and maximize the on-site stormwater uh, processing. That the state's not going to require you to get new land or pump it or process it in the floodplain or wetland, but you are going to have to deal with those areas. And for you guys, there's basically only two, which is nice. Uh, the town garage and wastewater treatment facility. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, the landfill area. If you don't care about the school, that's not your land. Those two were just put in there as kind of heads up uh, for them. And fortunately, the town office parking area with the post office is just over an acre, so that's below the threshold. So this should give you the start of a nice little plan for stormwater improvements beyond the big stuff that's being looked at on Pleasant Street uh, and Maple Street. And you can slowly add these to your capital plan and tick them off as you go. Kids are eligible for the state grants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And these and three little guys are basically ready to go. 80%? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so, yeah. yeah. <coughs> these, are, these are ready to go. So the ready to go ones are we can have. If you wait long enough, the end of it might fall in the river, though. Um, <laughs> uh, Pearl Street and <laughs> yeah, I don't think things can hear you. And Partridge Hill, and those are all kind of swales or sediment four bay type. Those are uh, things. Uh, above surface things that don't require. Uh, big, you know, sumps or things like that. Heavy duty storm no. drains. Did you say Partridge Hill? Yes. That's not on your list. I think it's on the list. Oh, it's got a different name. Oh. What, what did I call it? Oh, well, how much? Bingham Hill to the recreation field, maybe? Uh, well, let's figure it out by looking at the map. Partridge Hill. So yeah, Brigham Hill and we kept changing names because okay. so where where else does this look like? 
I'm not sure. I can figure out which one it goes to. Can you to. bring them closer for our eyes? We're not yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're getting older. Yeah, part of the Brigham Hill. Oh, so it's probably like Brigham Hill. Yeah, that's Brigham Hill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. Brigham Hill. That's the Brigham Hill to the Breckville. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. All right. So I will take these off, and you guys can keep them. I want my foam core back. But any questions? So I have one. So the, the table, sure. that, was two. The table that's on page 14 is mm -hmm. the required areas for 10% designs. Are these ordered in any Maple Street more higher priority than Vermont Tech? And this page, Appendix 1? or No, I'm on 14, 14. Um, which is uh, just a list. Those of was things. just a listing. And then that's what we started with. Is the cost summary in a priority order? Um, it's in a priority by cost per acre. Just cost per acre. Yeah, that's a good question. So there's no correlation to the highest um, risk areas to No. This is trying to get the most bang for your buck. Too. Right, that's what I figured. Yeah. Yeah. So question. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, did I hear you say you're Eighty percent funding is what. You I think I don't quote me on that. I'm not positive. It's positive. An extremely competitive grant program. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. The money's there right now, so you should think about moving forward. But it, everybody's going after it because stormwater that's is. jellyfish treatment. Oh, that's a. That's expensive. <laughs> that's a fancy big uh, sump. And included as a part of this project is a giant list of all the designs and all the uh, specs and um, vendor sheets and all that for it. It's a giant sump with these filters that you put in it and pull out. Um, it's, it's fancy. It's for processing stormwater right on site in a big storm drain uh, system, almost like a septic tank, um, when you don't have any room to shoot it off site. But, okay. Just so, uh, Marty has that all. Yeah. all so that this is a settlement tank, so to speak. So settlement tank, but it actually has like filters in it that are changeable. Mm. So what's yeah. the maintenance cost mm. for something like that? It's fancy. High. Yeah, that's what they recommended for that spot because there was very little room. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. But a good engineer might be able to get you around to something else. Yeah. Who knows? They. This was done by an engineer. Yeah. But, it's, that one's fancy, one. yeah, and <laughs> it's only in places where there's not a lot of room to put. So, timeline on these projects is this? Are, do, are we like up against the wall on any of these small things, or is it just a matter of no. grants? Just to no. make it, we can start this anytime. Anytime. Apply for grants, and mm -hmm. if we don't, if we're not successful now. We can yeah. just keep plugging away keep at plugging it. Plugging away at it. Right. Capital plan, you know. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, because it's just like. 20% twenty six thousand. Just, you know, work with your town staff to make sure you are keeping up with it, like everything. Keeping up with your roads and... Mm -hmm. And then the, the two sites that are listed as where there's erosion, are we, so where it says that Maple on Maple Street and South Pleasant Street? Yes. Are, um, those are being, I think those are part of the work that Marty's already doing with DNK. Or other consultants, yeah. Now, was this based on the entire inventory of the town's stormwater areas that need to be treated? It was, was based on what the, the, the state did, a yeah. real 10,000-foot um, kind of inventory where they quickly went through the village right. and assessed all the mini watersheds within town. Okay. Then uh, we had the consultant we hired, Otter Creek Engineering, take that report and go through and look at it, uh, prioritize it, and develop designs for the ones that they think were number one problems and number two could have a reasonable design. The whole town or the village? The village. The village. Just the village. Not just the village. Right. We didn't deal with things like water runoff. And we, didn't, we didn't go up to Randolph Center. Okay. We didn't go to East Randolph. No. Right. All right. So that was a, that was a, mm -hmm. It was a small grant, what, 20,000? Yeah. And it was 80 20 as well? Um, it, it turned out we provided about uh, a two river six grand in match and staff time and some money for the designs, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the state paid for the rest. So you got twenty five thousand of not free work because 
you're listening to us now, and we worked with Marty and the road guy, mm -hmm. so they provided some staff time, but it was good value for the money. Okay. So my question is, is so moving forward and beyond this, outside of the village, those are areas that we need to address too, is how's that? Um, a lot of those areas, uh, the big one with an impervious surface that's uh, not yours, that's not in the village, is VTC. Is VTC. Right, that's their bailiwick. Okay. Um, the other big one that is yours is the road system. Right. And that's covered by the new municipal roads general permit. And you folks have had an, an inventory that right. we conducted with uh, your road staff. Uh, Rita's in charge of that. And there's a report, and there's also a list in that report of the worst spots and mm -hmm. the treatments for them. Right. And that's basically uh, a spectrum of if it's really <coughs> steep, um, you need to apply these standard treatments, stone line ditching, uh, cul certain treatments for culvert outfalls, things like that. So that's how you handle that portion of the infrastructure that's outside the village. And there's some current state programs that are funding work in Randolph and all our towns. Yeah. Grants and aid is one of those that, that we bring in money and flows through us. And, and I think you did. You didn't yeah. do a grant the first year, but you did a grant the second year. So. Yep. And then there are better roads grants yeah. and stuff for bigger Through V-Trans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time. Thank yeah, you. hopefully this will be yes. helpful when you're yeah. going forward. Yeah. Absolutely. Appreciate it, Peter. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Peter. Yeah. And Peter? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just asked you anything that fits in with the downtown designation since it's in the building. Uh, uh, the Prince Street program I was looking at, I believe it's part of an ongoing conversation with uh, RACDC uh, about a multi phase approach to the grant that we have received. And then uh, redesigning the Prince Street area to make it more pedestrian friendly, as well as to help the outdoor recreation component with the hub to make it more easily accessible for bicycles to potentially use the uh, RACDC owned forest area by, right. by the forest. Blood plain forest. Blood plain forest. So that being missed on the top of the Thanks again. Have a good day. Thank you. Summer. This is a ratification. Uh, the board approved. And it will help the library to hire a performer to help um, uh, improve the, the conditions of uh, uh, make it easier for kids to, to connect with the store. I believe it's a part of an annual grant that uh, the library has last for. Um, this year there was just a little bit of a hiccup in, in the, the portion of the applying um spoken with the library director and she's um assured it won't happen again so how many hours the first time did it take to put together the grant application and then to coordinate all this and i bet it's more than 200 dollars worth of uh, I, I spoken with Amy about it. She feels comfortable applying for the funding. Uh, I think she, um, the current preference is to not include it into the annual budget process. Um, I have certainly expressed a concern to the board to, to Amy. She feels comfortable applying for the grant on, on a regular basis. I'm glad she feels comfortable doing it, and I'm all for it if they had some value to a $200 grant. By the time we get done her time to apply, and clip staff time to set the grant up and then we do the reporting on it and then we do the make the payment and then we go and ask for the money and then we account for it when it comes in we've probably spent five hundred dollars to get a two hundred dollar grant and then cliff's got to record it and, yeah. it. <laughs> and then he has an audit binding on it and, and it's a thousand dollar grant <laughs> Some and are maybe? these all these are all coming through the state department of library yes. so let me tell you there's this effort underway right now at the state level if anybody wants to tie in on anything as a state right now now's the time to find these type of things and report them in to be looked at for a better way to do it and it's on any process that the state has so it seems to me like the Department of Libraries could do an annual allocation to libraries to include all of this in one. It's 
instead of these repeated little piddly amounts. And it would cut our time down and everybody else's. But Did the librarian talk about how long it takes her to prepare one of these? Uh, I have not asked her much about time wise, but I could certainly suggest that we look into the process of recommending a mainstreaming of the Department of Libraries and how they interact with local libraries. And um, I think it would be better received if Amy had that conversation with the library and the state as opposed to me getting involved. But I certainly speak with Amy about it, sure. It should come out with just one yeah. cycle a year. Put all that in there. I just remember this conversation a year ago. That's absurd. Yeah. It's every time they get one hundred and fifty dollars for this and two hundred and fifty dollars for that. It's like seriously. Mm -hmm. So we uh, approved this through email. So we just need to ratify it tonight. <coughs> Oh, it's a late one, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to make a motion to ratify the oh, vote. Oh, sure. So. Well, I'll make a motion to ratify the library. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Northern Borders grant requirements. We would like to request, uh, well, we have uh, Josh here who's been working on our Northern Borders grant application and at this point we would like to request uh, the board to authorize the town to apply for Northern Borders grant and also to um, authorize both Josh or I or Josh and I to sign on behalf of the town submitting the application. Um, Josh, do you have anything else to add? Oh, that was perfect. That's, that's all we need. Well, it's a half a million dollar grant. Yeah. yeah. It's, have we confirmed if Randolph's 80 20 or 50 50? Uh, 80 20. So, and it's the overall project that the grant is for? It's for the water system uh, improvement, so uh, replacing the reservoir and limiting the Pearl Street well source, um, putting the three new bedrock wells online, pump house facility, um, the whole project that was identified in the PER from last, last December. May. Yeah, last December, yeah. what we talked about last May. And the total cost of that project that was more than five hundred thousand. Yeah, it was one nine two five. So the point point million. The, the grants needed. We have a strong case to make. Um, right, except that we've we've got another seven hundred and fifty thousand to identify. I think you have right. twelve months to match funds. Um, they're actually there's, a period, there's an extended period of time to it. Their the language is they, they do provide a date. They said that they require either committed uh, funds for the project um, by September twentieth of this year, but then they go on to say that they will not issue um, the letter to go forward until all of the funds are committed, all of the other funds are committed. So that's kind of vague. And we're looking at other sources like CDBG and EDA. CDBG, um, and of course the, the voters approved the $1.5 million bond last year. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, either a loan or um, through the bond bank. We are working on identifying a firm to perform an income survey of the water district, which is needed for us to move forward with the CDBG application. Um, that is something that we learned uh, from the CBG staff that our current income survey is just is too old. So we're working on, on having that information so that we can put our application together for the CBG grant program. Um, and their meeting is in September? Yeah, and actually it, um, our census designated place um, covers a lot of the water system, but it the water system goes beyond the border, so that's why it triggers us to have the income survey. If we were all within the CDP, we could just go with the numbers that HUD has, and we would we would know, and it would be a done deal. Um, but so we do have to do the income survey, and that also benefits us to access the loan funds at um, 
uh, Department of Environmental Conservation because um, they have some pretty favorable programs for communities um, who meet that threshold. And the 1.25 is only doing the reservoir issues and bringing the new wells on. 1.925. Those would be sort of quite a chunk of change to find. Um, but it doesn't address the expansion down Beanville or any of those, right? Mm -hmm. But if we did an EDA grant, we could add in part of bringing that online as well as the expansion going down Beanville. I mean, it's it's, those it's are possible. Like 3 I, I don't. I don't think we're a very. Um, I don't think we're a very competitive case to make in terms of the EDA funding um, if we're looking at the Beanville project. <coughs> if looking at it in, in, a, in an entirety, um, I think you know, the EDA option, I don't think is, I don't think we should be banking on that or counting on that. I think, I think we should be looking at the northern borders coming in, because we are making a strong case um, for the, the half million dollars, um, and then working to do the income um, study, income survey, so that we can uh, uh, go to CWG in September and make our case for that, um, and then then we'll know by I think it takes them a couple months um, to uh, announce awards. So November, December, we'll know if if, if we're going to get a CWG, <coughs> and then the rest of the funds I think we could utilize. Uh, through the uh, drinking water loan fund, which has that pretty good incentive of it's not negative interest anymore, but it's principal um, relief. They they forgive principal uh, forty percent. So it's structured like a negative interest loan, but they'll just um, yes, waive the principal. They'll waive forty percent of the principal. Mm -hmm. it, there's actually the, um, a, a really good um, program that they have right now. Um, I about that. There's a good program that they have now. We're not able to access it right now, but they have a special program running this month um, where they, they take a, a quarter million dollars off from a million dollar project automatically. Um, Randolph is a community that qualifies for it, so it might be available later in the year. Who knows? Um, but it's a program that is heavily funded. That fund has, um, from my conversation that I had today, is $50 million in funds in it, so um, with no end in sight. So that, that capital source will be there for us to access to make up the difference when that time comes. How do you feel about, so a couple weeks ago, Ted Brady sent an email about Opportunity Zones getting priority treatment. I think that helps us a lot, doesn't it? I think I put opportunity zone in the narrative like a like dozen exactly. times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just, I'm just saying, I think we, we stand a pretty good chance probably of nailing some of this stuff because of that situation where we're now in opportunity zone. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's, you know, another plus for us. So. Job, job creation. Job creation, right. right. Job creation and, and getting the water system, you know, because right now, you know, technically we're still under this you know, can't authorize any new connections. So we need to solve that problem as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think if we're being seen as moving this process forward, you think we can get a little bit of forgiveness up there, a and &R, to say, hey, yeah, we're, we're all good with it now? You know, would they waive and let us make these connections going forward if the new this is coming? There are options available to us that are outside of our current court case. Okay. Um, some a little more aggressive than others. Yeah, uh, but I would think it should be seen as a, as a, you know, we're making an effort here to fix the problem. These are being seen more favorable by not a and &R okay. and Good. putting a and in a position of not working with towns because we are moving forward with everything else and everyone else is seeing us is doing so. Okay. Well, and I've been, I've been the interface between the Agency of Commerce and um, Mike Sherling is dealing with Julie Moore at a &R to try to say Randolph is not, you know, bulling their neck and saying, go away, you know, leave us alone. They're saying we're in a tough situation. 
we're wrestling with the best way to solve it, we need some consideration of that. And as long as you are moving forward with that, Secretary Sherling has something that he can um, oh. suggest as yeah, positive. Great. And um, Josh Hanford and uh, Nate Cleveland are in conversations with me, with Mike, and Ted Brady. So you've got a lot of people on your side as long as they are confident that you're um, making your making best efforts to go efforts, right? making your best efforts to go forward and not just, right. you know, sticking your head in the sand. I don't know if that's a good metaphor, but yeah. I know I think it, that's my point is we're making this effort. You know, it seems yeah. like somewhere's along the line somebody needs to cut us a little slack here. Yeah. That's the pitch that they're getting from from me, from Mike and Great. and and uh, Nate, the two mates. All right, well thank you for doing that. So what you want tonight is just authorization to go ahead and apply for the Northern Borders grant, which is one piece of a much bigger puzzle. Yes. And to authorize Josh and I to sign up on behalf of the town. If for some reason I or Josh are not around, one or the other one can handle it. Okay. Can have a motion on that one? Sure. I'll make a motion that we authorize Adolfo and Josh to move forward with the Northern Borders grant opportunity. Second on you. All right, I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. We are back into old business with the agreement for Orange County Share. Uh, <clears throat> I have finally completed a. This guy's. Thank you. Completed a draft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks so entertained. He's excited. Yeah. He's just welcome this. Uh, get out of here. They're going to see his last life. <laughs> Exciting stuff, isn't it? I know. <laughs> <laughs> we only do this once a month. Now you know why. I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we completed uh, drafting a uh, draft agreement for the board to consider. Uh, this agreement uh, has been fully reviewed by our attorney and includes all of our attorney's edits. The agreement has also been reviewed by the sheriff's department and is um, uh, has been approved by the sheriff's department. Uh, there is one item that remains uh, crossed out and that was the start date of the agreement. Uh, the sheriff and I have uh, reached an agreement pending a second component to, to this item, which is the uh, offer for the equipment that remains from the Randolph Police Department. Uh, so if the contract is approved with the start date of July 1st, 2019, um, then we could have a different conversation about the offer made by the Sheriff's Department for all the remaining um, equipment and items from the Randolph Police Department, including radios and vehicles. This contract specifically says that the town has the authority to request that a sheriff's deputy that is not favorable to our environment be asked to leave. Um, it also requires the sheriff's department to inform us of overtime costs, um, reasons for them to also uh, report to the select board and to the town manager uh, statistics that have already been shared with us. Um, most recently, we received with our invoices uh, calls that uh, the Sheriff's Department have responded to, uh, data that we did not have in the past, um, and data that was also presented to the Ad Hoc Police District Advisory Committee in terms of response time and calls. Um, those are just a few of the items that are in the, the contract. Um, the items that are also included in here are the recommendations made by the ad hoc committee, including the length of time, uh, which is a committed three years with two years being uh, on a year-to-year -year basis, as well as the 120 hours per week uh, that the committee recommended to the select board. Are there any changes between the copy of this I got a couple of months ago? Uh, no, this was fully put to bed about, a, I'd say, I'd say two weeks ago uh, with the Sheriff's Department final approval coming a few days ago. So were the major changes made? 
Major changes were specifically related to our evidence locker that the Sheriff's Department is taking full control as of July of last year. Um, additional, uh, let's say, that was one of the items that came from VLCT in terms of just uh, liability to the town. Um, subrogation was already in here. Um, and specifically on the officers, if we choose to have someone not be a part of our sheriff's deputy crew, then we could ask them to leave. That wasn't in the previous versions. Mm -hmm. Who did that suggestion come from? <clears throat> um, just through different conversations. Um, it also it, it gives us um, the town and the select for the authority to say, you know, one officer is receiving a lot of. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. I'm just yeah. Curious how. It, it it came about from just from different conversations. Um, um, I couldn't pinpoint the exact location, but yeah. Yeah. it just seemed like I'm a curious more than anything else. Yeah. So this this contract was reviewed by VLCT. VLCT and passive, um, also by our attorney, and then also by the sheriff's department. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, this specific contract itself, uh, the, the caveat. The final product of this was not reviewed by Passive. Their recommendations and suggestions from the previous version review were included. So this particular version not reviewed by Passive. The previous version iteration of this was reviewed by Passive. And the changes were their recommendations in addition to language changes by our attorney. So I just wanted to be more specific. Are they working under a, what sort of contract are they working under? The current contract uh, is the temporary agreement that we had entered with the, with the Sheriff's Department. It was for six months, and any additional months after that would be on a month-to-month -month basis, uh, pending the finalizing the agreement with a long-term contract. So. <clears throat> the Sheriff's Department initially requested that we start this contract retroactive to Jan January 1st of this year. The reason being was that we could then start the increase of rate from 46 to 47 dollars a half a year earlier. Um, we felt that it was necessary to say, no, let's start as of July 1st. It makes it easier for us. Um, it also makes it easier for us because we've already budgeted next year on a 46 dollars for the entire year. Um, the Sheriff's Department was completely fine with that. He agreed. He said it was fine. He also asked that, um, that the select board on the second portion of this take into consideration that they have now been operating under the same pay scale for an entire year when they had initially thought it would be a half a year and then enter into a whole new agreement with potentially different rate other than 46 or you know, escalate, uh, uh, make the $47 rate sooner rather than later. So he was okay with starting on July 1st, essentially pushing off the increase to $47 the, not the upcoming fiscal year, but the next fiscal year, but hopes that the board uh, takes that savings into consideration when they review the proposal for the total equipment for the police department. And it's, it's, it is fair to say that even, even though the Sheriff's Department has made a see offer for the equipment, that same equipment is going to be used here in Randolph. So we're selling it to the Sheriff's Department so that we could just completely be rid of having anything to do with the police department as a, as, as a town, but that equipment is still going to remain in Randolph to be used here in Randolph. So essentially, we're removing the liability, but still getting the use out of it. I think the bigger challenge on the equipment is that it would be in their hands and they'd be using it, but for auditing purposes, we have to do a physical inventory of all that yeah. and include it as an asset of the town. Yeah. So you've got this or the police department. mix. Yeah, well, it's an asset of the town, even though it's in the police district. The same thing as okay. the water wastewater is an asset of the town, but it's who pays for it is specific to the water wastewater district. But you end up with assets that you have no control over, and once a year you have to go inventory them and try to be accountable for them. That's yeah. an impossible. The other thing it does is it removes all the firearms from ownership of the town and tasers. And those mm -hmm. are two things that if we don't have any, say, in the individual using them, we should not be owning them. Right. For liability purposes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
This will get us out of the game completely other than yeah, the yeah. It sounds like getting something that's not big sense. So how, you know, how, um, how confident are you that the, that the proposed price is, 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 a, is, is a reasonable price? For the it's very close to what I had initially projected to the select board as being the option. I had initially projected a $45,000 cost. The sheriff has made an offer of forty thousand. Um, it's actually, it's it's a very fair offer with the type of equipment we have. A lot of our tasers are at the end of their life. Um, much of the equipment that we have for radios is also at the end of their life. Most of it was purchased through grants. Um, we have checked with BLCT's um, law enforcement consultant. He checked on our equipment and whether or not we can actually get rid of it because we purchased it through grants. Um, he said most of them, if not exceeded the life, requir uh, life requirement of the grant, is very close to it. And the grantees have said if it's within a year of the grant portion ending, then we're okay with it going away. Mm -hmm. The other component of that is <coughs> because it's being either sold or transferred to another law enforcement agency, that completely gets us clear of any requirements because it's still going to be used in law enforcement as another certified law enforcement agency. So we don't even have to deal with that portion of it. Um, so it would be an, an equal, just even transfer, sale and the transfer over. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Look at those numbers. I think they're pretty reasonable. Yeah, there is a uh, an inventory that was performed by a random police department uh, acting chief before she left uh, in your packets, and the amounts that I have listed on here are just items that I've been able to find online. Um, not selling the items would either cause us to own them and keep them because they're at the end of their life, no one's going to want to buy them. Uh, or if we spent hours trying to sell them on eBay to a private owner, it would trigger other issues that we had to deal with, with grantors and it would be a, a, a nightmare for us. And the revenue will end in the uh, reserve account for the police district. Police, uh, police department. So. Does this list include the cruises parked on Town Road? Yes. Yeah, we have three. There is one currently parked near the water wastewater plant that is a in a do not use status because of uh, an exhaust issue. So, um, but that's one. Of these. That's one of the three. Yeah. <clears throat> and they got a return. Third problem. It's on them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. fine with it. Yeah. Get the background check on the guns, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Make sure you transfer them properly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any more questions on that? Nope. No. If, if I may suggest, if, if there is a motion to be made, if, if it would be made to have the agreement approved uh, starting as of July 1st, uh, of this year, then also approve the offer made by the sheriff's department for the equipment. I'll move that we approve the agreement effective July 1st of this year, and that we also uh, approve the, the sale of the old Randolph Police Department. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Any other business? Awesome. No. Gotta find something. It's only 750. Well, that case, the manager's report will take an hour. It's gotta come more often. They're looking hungry over there. We are hungry. What time did you guys get off the plane this morning? 6 a.m. That's oh. what I heard. 6 a.m. Can stop unfeeding you? Jeez. We actually had lunch uh, nope, across the street. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was breakfast and lunch. Breakfast and lunch. Good. <laughs> okay. All right. I've got to go find dinner. And I paid. Just there. Yeah, okay, okay. good. Yeah, I'm glad you're treating them. Okay. <laughs> Something to expect to go. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something to export. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Um, the first uh, item is, uh, I'll, I'll be very, I'll, I'll try to be brief. Um, we have photographs that um, we have taken of the repairs at the swimming pool. Um, the swimming pool repairs have commenced. Uh, 
photographs there will show you just exactly how much excavation has started to take place. Um, we have discovered, here's one over on the side here. Uh, the, um, the name of the, uh, the skimmers uh, have started to be removed and those are the items that have taken water to, to clean it up. Uh, some of those items have been removed. Um, we have found that in the removal of those items that um, the frame, the wood frame used to keep them in place when the, the pool was first being constructed was left in there. Um, and the existing contractor says that that is a bad idea because of moisture, it expands and contracts and it breaks yep. and rots and creates problems. So um, we're discovering some of those problems. The next step now is before we start putting in the new skimmers and making additional repairs, is to test the pressure of the pipes uh, again. Um, and once the, the new pressure test comes back, if it comes back favorable, we're going to be able to start closing it all up and, and um, you know, continuing with the, the, the construction process of it as opposed to the digging dirt up. Right. Um, because of the deficiencies that have been identified that are that should have been caught by engineering supervision, um, I reached out to the Boy and King. They were the group that was last involved in this particular work about 17 years ago. So I've asked that they speak with the current contractor to see if there's anything that they missed. And if they missed it, then we will ask for some money or some support for this project. So that's an ongoing conversation. <coughs> so you're saying that they're discovering issues that are increasing the cost of this repair? Uh, they're discovering issues that may have led to the problems that we have to the failure. Uh, the failure. Uh, uh, like leaving in the wood. Leaving in the wood. The project manager on site didn't make them do things to spec. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Uh, so the wood is the most obvious one that's in the photograph. The other is depth of depth and slope of some of the concrete slabs that were poured and the way concrete was poured over the the skimmers and the piping, which is making it incredibly hard to take them out. Um, some of those items should not have been done that way. So could have led to our problems. So we're working on getting those uh, answers, and as soon as I get them, I'll share them with the board. Uh, <coughs> so pressure testing next week? Pressure testing next week, yeah. The, we, the contractor still feels that they are well on track to open the four-hour requested deadline. Uh, so yeah, looking, looking good. Uh, as I shared with the board before, we received a grant through the downtown de designation program of 73350 this grant would be to redesign Merchants Road, to remove the stop sign that's in the middle of the road, and add sidewalk behind Ken's uh, Barbershop, um, Chef's Deli, and that part of uh, Pleasant Street. So we're feeling confident that we're going to be able to move forward. We received a request from Stagecoach to, uh, for them to become more involved in the designing and sharing input with the town. So RCDC is working on meeting with them very soon to, to get their input. Uh, is the red line stop? Or? Uh, we're not really sure what their request is yet. Um, I think yeah, maybe I think it could be a part of it. Oh, the red line? Yeah, yeah. stop there. Yeah. So, um, the existing, well, the sidewalk that we're proposing won't actually go as far as the driveway uh, where the red line stop is, but the, I don't think they know that yet. So, we're still, we're still working out. We'll massage it. <coughs> Uh, as I alluded to earlier, we have an income survey that we're working on and we're going to be applying for or at some point coming to the select board about applying for a CDBG grant requesting that approval. Uh, have more information as that becomes available. We have the Maple Street project, the, a, a new proposed timeline for that project. Um, we are going to have to push that back uh, at least a year. Uh, one, because of stormwater funding, uh, there is a grant that's available that we could potentially apply for for stormwater uh, to help us with uh, the stormwater grant portion or the stormwater component of that project. Um, but the new timeline that we have is a traffic study that will be conducted by Two Rivers Out of Quichi at the end of this month, the second study. The first study was conducted in October of last year, but due to weather, the, the data came back corrupted. and. We have, to, we have to do it over again. The data will then be available by the end of this month and then available to the select board immediately after the June meeting so that we can discuss it, to share with the board. Um, and then the idea is once we have the data and the board is, has been able to discuss it, 
We can then schedule a new community meeting that will include <coughs> residents on Maple Street, residents on Highland Street, and the residents on Fairview Avenue, uh, so they can have more input on what they would like the project to look like. Um, some of the proposals now is to keep it two-way. Uh, that would create problems with uh, current road designs. Another proposal was one way. That would uh, alleviate some of the problems, but also create problems with potential traffic on neighboring roads that some residents have expressed concern about. Um, so the idea of the community meetings is that we'll hear everyone and then have a better option for the select board to consider. Would that be a 2020 start? Possibly? At least. 2020 could be further. Uh, calendar year 20. Could, in terms of fiscal year, we're thinking 21, 22, probably 21, 22. You know, depending on funding for someone. We're going to push it out that far. Somebody needs to do some interim work up there. Yeah, we That's need, in we rough. Need to put a rough. Sure. Yeah. And there's something going on in front of uh, the house next to the last Gifford Hawk building there. It's dug up. There's a cone sitting in it. It's, you know, the sidewalk is cement blocks. Yeah. One of those is sitting up. It's not a real good, safe location. <coughs> it looks like they had to come out with a curb stop to shut the path, the uh, water off. Yeah. For whether there's a project going on there or, or mm -hmm. what it is, but it's just not a real safe looking. No. I reached out to our water superintendent about that uh, issue. I don't recall the answer. He did provide me with an answer as to why that's there, but I don't remember. Uh, but I'll check with him again tomorrow and circulate the answer to the board. If, if we're talking about doing something in the interim, because that road is in such rough shape, what, what, what would we, what, I mean, what is there to do other than scoop code it? Well, you're going to have to fill the potholes, at least. Right, yeah. right now, we have a big sign-up that says potholes, and yeah. they're like the potholes. Yeah, yeah. No, but I thought, <laughs> you were, I thought you were you're alluding to something more than just filling some potholes. I think you got to do something to make it passable, at least. You know, I mean, it does great for traffic. <coughs> oh, yeah. It's really it's slow slow the the traffic down. Down. <laughs> That's it's just one way traffic now, right? <laughs> but, yeah, you know, kind of. I think some of the... The potholes, especially towards the east end of it, are quite drastic. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there are it's, people complaining about it. So you know. Well, and they're not. It's not just the smaller cars that are complaining. About no, no, it's, it's, trucks it's substantial and, stuff. Yeah, so. so many yeah. of the roads in that neighborhood have been neglected. It seems like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For a long yeah. time. The longer the potholes are there, the worse the frost yeah. penetrates everything. Exactly. So. The other, the other, what I'm asking, the reason why I'm asking is that if, if we're going to be spending a significant amount of money to do something which will make it measurably better than what it is now, then, you know, it doesn't make sense to then be ripping that up, whatever it is, a year yeah. later or a year and a half later. I think you still, you got to at least hit it with some hot patch or something. You got to, yeah. You got to find it's out, bad. I mean. You know, part of this issue floats years. around the neighbors, okay, because there's, close to there's, traffic. you definitely need the community meeting. Mm -hmm. We heard that here before, <laughs> yeah. okay. There's issues between, you know, one way, two way, and whether or not, you yeah. know, how it works. So I really think you have to engage them in this process, yeah. but we also need the data to be able to share with them. Yeah. So, but it does need a band-aid. I mean, it needs, it's, you know, oh, shape. Mass idea. What's that? Close to through traffic. Close it through traffic. Actually, close it through traffic until we can get it right. I mean, you can try it. We'll work with, with our highway superintendent with four options, uh, things that would work best, things that are more cost effective, but still. Well, I'm just curious enough. what the traffic is. I mean, that's why I'd love to see the traffic study. I mean, yeah. I'd love There's to know a how log. many cars are really going down there. There's a lot go down there. There's are there really? No. Yeah, I mean, I, I walk on that street every day. There's not a lot of cars. Every, every <laughs> lunchtime I go down there. It's it's a it's a cutoff. Everybody in my work lunchtime they're going up and down there. Well, so for five minutes a day it's busy, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, to, but to, yeah, we gotta do something about the roads. That's all. I'm not yeah. saying we shouldn't do anything about it. I'm just saying this. I know if you want to go spend, not, spend, not, it's it's not, spend a chunk of money and then rip it up the next year, but you know I I don't I hate to do that too, but yeah. there comes a point here where well you'll find out where the cars are going if you shut it down through traffic. Yeah. Be able to tell There's your traffic study. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put the game camera out there. You can count the, game, cut the, cut the cars. You won't have to. People will be calling. <laughs> <laughs> can't play basketball. 
So we'll find, we'll find some options and we'll, before we yeah. take any steps, we'll certainly bring it to the board with you know, best options. I live on Yeah, okay. The next item is, uh, 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 there have been ongoing conversations. Um, we now have uh, more open communication with RACDC after uh, the board asks uh, me and two board members to engage on you know, a number of different things. Salisbury Square is the most recent conversation that started between the select board and uh, with representatives of the board and RACDC. Josh um, from staff has taken the lead just because of the nature of the, of the, of the topic. I think Perry, you were part of those meetings uh, Perry as well. Um, so it, it, it sounds like we're at the very least becoming more knowledgeable of what the end goal is from uh, our partner, our CDC, and what they would <coughs> essentially want to propose to the town for support, um, as well as getting a better vision for what is needed versus what their plan was versus what their plan may become in the future. Um, um, that was my interpretation of what was actually mm -hmm. happening in those conversations. As soon as they decide they were going to build down there, because while Peter Gregory was sitting here, he forwarded me that they wrote him a letter of support. They're one of our competitors for the Northern Borders Grant. They are, which <coughs> is a problem for me at least. But that's something that, you know. RACDC is a competitor? They are submitting, they submitted a grant to Northern Borders for uh, infrastructure funding for the Salisbury Square project. Water, wastewater. So. so, did they ever? Did they define first off that they were getting away from the ugly boxes? Mm -hmm. So, have they? Because I thought we were asked if we were if we would have some folks sit down with them to shape this project and what it was going to look like and what types of income targets things that the project was aimed at. Yeah. And then that was the last I heard of it until now we're being told they're applying for a Northern Borders grant too. Yeah, we did not provide a letter of support for them. Uh, they are, from my understanding, is that the project itself is still in flux. They're still asking for funding for the infrastructure but not necessarily for the construction of the type of housing. Um, they have been informed by different avenues or different people that the Vermont concept, although is attractive to some, it's not necessarily proven and can be a bit of a shaky yeah, market. At, at, our, at our meeting, they, they said that they're actively engaging with other home builders to come up with alternatives to the Vermonts so that they have com com Things to compare and to, so that they can have a better informed choice about that. Um, that that, they're, that they're, some of the other um, modular home builders are also starting to enter that hot, sort of high efficiency market, and so they're I mean, with with designs which would aesthetically at least be a little more traditional, and so they're 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 seeing they're they're trying to get that information. Cost of that, right? The Vermont was expensive. Was expensive. Very it was, so it can't. Right. So I don't know that we're pricing it even in our medium income. Well, they're 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 they are they 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 seem really committed to um, to a, a middle you know a middle income buyer for these for these units. We were all pretty clear about that. Yeah, I, I think that. I mean, if that's the message that we sent. I think that's what was received. I believe that, you know, the goal is Josh is actually working with them. There's some also some, some funding sources that he made Julie aware of, which you know are for energy efficient type stuff, that would help lower those costs from, you know, basically take some of the, uh, you know, th that those grants would take some of the hit, for the consumer. So that there'd be some incentive. There's, there's, there's yeah, there was, specifically net, net there was, zero. Exactly. Encouraging grants right. out there. So there's some things. Kind of very much this kind of project. Julie really seems to think that now is, is actually turning into be a very good time for them to to really push hard on on this project. And the goal was that if those those grants were available, 
<coughs> that they would be used to supplement the cost to lower that cost to make it affordable. There's a lot of strings attached to the to the, to the purchasers, but you know that's all stuff that has to be addressed. So you know Josh is working with really on that, and I think we are all encouraged that you know there may be a little shift away from the very expensive Vermont concept. So you yeah. just have to wait and see what they come up with because that was the take I got was is let's see what the other developers can produce. Yeah. yeah. They, they they seem to hear the the concerns about the Vermonts pretty. Not just not just from us, but from other folks in the community as well. Yeah. yeah. The, the conversation will be ongoing. This was the first meeting of several that I think have to happen on this particular topic, especially because we have to do something with that. And part of the fear of some of the folks that live there is our zoning really wouldn't allow us to say no to them just because just they, they, they look like. Yeah. And but, but they would all have to live next to them and look at them. Yeah, we talked about, <clears throat> then we talked about, you know, some, the character of the community, which, you know, was, was part of that conversation, and so there was some discussion about moving away from that boxy concept, <clears throat> so, you know, and, you know, like I said, Josh has said, that, you know, there's other energy efficient slash grants for that type of housing, <clears throat> but, you know, basically not totally a net zero, you know. And wasn't there a conversation about the the people who design these things are really engineers? They're not the Vermont. They're, yeah, the Vermont concept. You know, they're not they're engineers, so they're looking at the, that the making the home as energy efficient as possible, okay, but not maybe aesthetically pleasing yeah. as possible. So hence the other opportunities that might be out there is something they thought they should investigate. So. <clears throat> I'm anxious to see what might come from that. And they can go direct, right? They don't need to come through the town for that northern border stream. No, they don't have to go through us. There's certain nonprofits that probably. And from our understanding, is that even though it is a competitor, it is, it is, it has different criteria. It's, it's a different project. So ours is very competitive, whereas theirs, we're not really sure how they would see it, but ours takes more boxes. About the type of, per, per, uh, type of program that we're we're trying to implement. Yeah, I mean ours is more general community versus yeah. theirs being more spec specified to a certain target market. Yeah. So. And they like infrastructure. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, the last item I have is for uh, our recent communication with Chandler. Uh, we had a very productive first meeting with the Chandler group. Uh, representatives from the, the Chandler uh, management group. Um, we discussed a number of different things, including current programming, proposed programming, um, how the Chandler is interacting with all aspects of the community as opposed to the perceived only some aspects of the community. Um, we felt that uh, we reached a good ending point for the very first meeting. The second meeting we're working on scheduling now, and the second meeting will include uh, specific conversations about uh, costs for maintenance of the building, costs going forward, uh, as well as uh, a very frank conversation about Chandler's connection to the village laundromat and how that's affecting uh, the Chandler operation. So we're working on scheduling the second meeting. I thought the first meeting was very productive and um, at some point these meetings will eventually result in us having a new agreement that supersedes any previous agreements um, that includes everything that we are talking about now. Once we have that, we could certainly bring it to the board for review and approval. And that's it. So we have for the manager's report. And there's a side note: they did hire a new executive director, I believe, in the last couple of days. Yeah, I just got an email. Oh. That. So. <coughs> Sounds good. It's too early. You it? <laughs> I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Even though it's early? Yes. Hello.